Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Next Gen Racing Intercontinental Challenge GT3 Championship for 2021. And tonight marks round four of the five round championship. As we bring this to you on the Assetto Course of Competition on Sim Racing Platform on PC, as always. And here is our schedule for tonight. All times in Greenwich Mean Time, that's GMT or a UTC. We'll begin underway with the driver's brief in approximately 15 minutes, which will be the briefing for all of our drivers to know the ins and outs and the special rules that are applied to the racing at the circuit we are at today. After that, we'll begin underway with the 15-minute qualifying session at half past seven this evening. 15 minutes to determine what our grid order will be for the all-important race start. And indeed, at this circuit, we're not going to give away what the circuit quite is just yet, but this circuit qualifying is going to be absolutely critical. And it could be the fact that qualifying may determine some of our significant position outcomes. For that aside, we follow qualifying immediately with the race. The feet race our 90-minute race at quarter to eight and our drivers will be going fast they'll be going frantic there'll be strategy involved and by the end of it we'll only have one winner and three podium finishers and we'll be having a catch up with our post-race podium finishers and indeed it'll be interviews with all three of those drivers at approximately a quarter past nine tonight in the commentary box, you have myself, Paul TX141 Walsh, also known as Britain a Spit, depending on what media you follow me on. And tonight's broadcast, as always, is being brought to you on three different media platforms, depending on your choice of poison. You can first off tune in via the official Next Gen Racing YouTube channel. That's Next Gen Racing on YouTube. Alternatively, you can tune in via the Facebook, the Next Gen Racing official Facebook groups. That's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Next Gen Racing. Or if you're Twitch inclined, then you can tune in using my personal Twitch channel. That is twitch.tv forward slash TX141. And of course, this series brought to you in collaboration with the SimGrid and Coach Dave Academy. It would not be possible without the assistance of both parties who are primary sponsors, Wednesday senior partners for this series. And let's go ahead and introduce them. We start off with the SimGrid, of course. And who are the SimGrid, I hear you ask? Well, the SimGrid is a place for amateur and professional sim racers to compete against fellow drivers in leagues and endurance events for a set of course to competition. And also more recently, expanding into the world of both R Factor 2. And they also held their inaugural i racing event last week now what's on the overall schedule for sim grid coming up their focus is still primarily on a set of course of competition on pc but they are looking at expanding further into the r factor 2 and i racing domains so whether you are looking for a serious championship a one-off racing event or a more casual championship it is the case the sim grid is the place to go to primarily for acc or a set of course of competition in full but do keep in mind they are expanding their services to r factor 2 and i racing as time goes on the Sim Grid, of course, working with us to run this series, whether it be putting out the advertising for this series, indeed our drivers sign up to this series using the Sim Grid, alternatively helping us run the series from start to finish, what with the point scoring and also providing us with our live and post race stewarding. We have a number of members from the Sim Grid stewarding team working with our own next gen racing stewards in order to provide that impartial and rather delicate stewarding balance which is needed to make sure the racing is hard but fair. And when rules are broken, we make sure those rules are adhered to now outside the sim grid of course we look to coach dave academy and who are coach dave academy i hear you ask well coach dave academy is the home of amateur and professional sim racers looking to up their game through coaching setups and track maps and if you're interested why not check out coachdaveacademy.com today and take your race into the next level whether it be trying to find a single tenth for a second a whole second on your lap time or looking to try and set up the car to give you better tire wear in the race or indeed improve your driving style you may feel as though your driving style is what's holding you back coach dave academy has all the tools and resources some of them paid for some of them for free but the definite thing is that you'll learn a lot through coach dave academy and whilst their focus is primarily on a set of course of competition or at least in the past they have expanded their services to iRacing recently as well so whether you're in a set of course of competition or iRacing fan on pc there's something there for everybody with coach dave academy and they've been supporting us in terms of running this series and getting the word out there and they've also been a previous partner with us much like the sim grid for the european gt3 championships both season one and season two and we're great to have we're grateful to have Coach Dave Academy coming back to support us in the Intercontinental Challenge GT3 Championship over the course of this series. But moving away from our sponsors then, let's talk about the season ahead, or really, as we move into the second half of the season, the season remaining. 
We kicked off three weeks ago with what was round and number one at Suzuka on the 23rd of November 2021. We then headed to Kyalami on the 30th of November 2021. Going from Japan to South Africa saw a mixture of races with Suzuka being a dry race and indeed a rather a frantic race in terms of strategy and outright pace. Kyalami was a race which saw qualifying plagued with the rain turning qualifying into a one lap shootout but then a dry race seeing a rather unconventional change up in the order. Round number three meanwhile last time out at Bathurst the Australian Australian circuit known as Mount Panorama Raceway in full. Up and down the mountain our drives were required to go and face the change of the mountain on the 7th of December 2021 and it was the case and the, there was an absolute deluge of rain at the circuit. Indeed the circuit was flooded from tip to tail and that made the racing even more difficult but amazingly the majority of our drivers who started the race were able to finish it and that is credit of course to their professional racing standards and the standards which we would expect from our drivers and they went well beyond them and it is the case that now we look ahead to round number four at Laguna Seca, the American circuit. And we'll give you a little bit more detail about the circuit as we go racing around it on the 14th of December 2021 today. Only one more round after that, and that is in a week's time, the season finale at spa Franklin but we'll come back to that later. Now, as we look to the championship standings, after three rounds, we can see that Danila Sherapenin is still leading the championship, the Russian leading now by a gap of 15 points over Luke Whitehead. The Briton still holding on to P2, but his advantage in P2 over the rest of the field and really cementing himself as that single championship contender versus Sherapenin is now under threat, with Luke Whitehead having a difficult time at Bathurst in the end, only picking up a result which was good enough to see him right on the fringes of the top 10. Meanwhile, Tinker van der Veld, who missed out on the win due to damage picked up up over the course of the race over 30 seconds of damage picked up at Bathurst saw Tinker van der Velde miss out on the win and instead finish in P2 but you can be sure the Dutchman is McLaren 720s GT3 tonight will be looking to overhaul that second place and close the gap to Sherapenin with the gap between our top three from top to bottom now being in the region of what is 17 points and it couldn't be closer. Raymond Mooney in P4 there ball bag as his nickname would go and it is the case that Mooney will not be joining us tonight due to a difficulty with regards to his health but we do wish him well and we hope to see the Porsche driver back in what is our final round our season finale in a week's time but still we miss him out on circuit and on those 150 points right now a primary contender to try and sneak his way into the top three instead now it will be about damage limitation when he goes into that season finale at Spa. Meanwhile our top five being completed by Dylan Tan there and we have been asked to correct this and only fair we kept referring to Dylan Tan as a Turkish driver in fact he is from Singapore and that goes to show you how poor my geography is with national flags so the Singaporean has corrected us then we're very grateful to Tan for reaching out and telling us that we're getting it wrong and the Ferrari driver here our lead Ferrari driver on 138 points in P5 only on result count back right now with the Russian of Konstantin Soldatov in the Aston Martin Racing V8 Vantage there in P6 on 138 points as well but Tan having that advantage with the results he's accrued so far. Outside our top six, George Booby, who returned to the Bathurst circuit as of last time out after taking a break to earmark the birth of his first offspring. And it is the case that George Booby returning last week and putting in a decent performance. But will we see the Porsche 911 driver put in an even stronger performance tonight at Laguna Seca and move himself back into the top five? Currently on 128 points and a good 10 points off of being in the top five as it stands. Andres Mesa, Harry Fitz and Vasily Anufriev there completing our top 10 and all three of those drivers as well looking for great results in order to get themselves back into the contention for the top five, if not a late charge into the top three, if not that all-important championship win. Outside of our top 10, we can see Ivan Shemotinsky there in P11 and only holding on to that P11 at the moment by two points over Marcus Fox, with Marcus Fox putting in another decent performance at Bethurst, albeit the Australian circuit catching many drives by surprise, but not Fox, it should be said. We're late charge up the field late on in the race with the strategy working out for the Austrian. Oleg Zabolov there in P13 on 107 points, just ahead of Christian Krivik there in P14 by a single point, and Matteo Murano in the top 15 as it currently stands and joint on 106 points with Christian Krivik but it's a case of results count back seeing Murano being the lower place driver. Outside our top 15, Christian Nembrini then P16 ahead of Kevin Gellin, Pavel Pushkarev, Killian Ryan Meenan and Maher Haratojo and it is the case that our top 20 are looking fast and frantic and it's anyone's guess whether these drivers who are outside the top 10 will be in the top 10 come at the end of tonight. Or as we look outside our top 20 into our top 30, it is the case that any of our drivers here could find themselves charging up into the top 20 come the end of round number four. With Vez Field right now, the Porsche 911 driver from Team ITR having a difficult string of performances and once again finding himself having a difficult day at the office at Bathurst. And will we see Vez Field finally put together the result that he's been hunting for some time and see him jump his way up the field? 
Ivan Fornes not able to take part last time out of the Australian circuit. Seeing the case that the driver fell down the order there in the Aston Martin Racing V8 Vantage, will we see the Jokers esports driver return to the circuit tonight and put in a stellar result? Rainer F. State there, P23 on 73 points, only on count, back behind Ivan Fornes right now. And we can see the debutant there of Darren King. He debuted last time out of Bathurst, picking up the win on his debut, making it three different winners in three races, with George Booby taking the win at Suzuka, then Daniela Shirapenin taking the win at Kyle Army, and Darren King on his debut in the Jota McLaren taking the win at Bathurst. Will we see the King reign supreme once again, or will it be the case that we have a fourth winner in four races? We'll have to wait and see. But Darren King are making the perfect debut and on 72 points there in P24. P25 being held by Dennis DeMarco there and on joint 68 points with Luca Felipe, but Felipe behind on count back of results there in P26. Michael Pambran, Chris Zoiger, Benjamin Aselli and Andreas Sorensen completing our top 30 there. All these drivers are looking for an opportunity to get some good points on the board and creep their way into the top 20 or at least get ahead of their peers going into the season finale. Outside of our top 30, it's the case of Leo Boulay there, the McLaren driver, who it would be argued if one driver has had the worst luck of anybody in this series so far, it is the McLaren driver of Leo Boulay from Team ITR. And the reason for that, it just seems whenever he qualifies well, it always goes wrong at the start of the race. So if he doesn't have a great qualifying session over the course of the race, it will go wrong somewhere in the race, whether it be for an instant with another driver or just the strategy not working out. Boulay finding himself having the greatest misfortune of anyone and on 62 points right now, will need to try and find a way to shake off the bad luck and get a strong result. We know he's a top five contender, but we haven't seen him land it in the top five so far. Matthias Servalone there in P32, batting in the midfield, and the SPQR driver putting in good performances, much like his teammate, but find himself a little bit further down the order. And Walter Lux in P33, and I'm sorry to say we'll not be seeing Walter Lux take to the circuit tonight, unfortunately, as he's not feeling too well, but we do wish the Austrian all the best in preparation for the season finale, should he be able to return. Seal Pantera there in P34 and 55 points, one point ahead of Lucas Seidel there in P35, and we can see Andre Jacklin who will not be joining us tonight unfortunately due to circumstances, and we wish Andre Jacklin well as we look forward to seeing him potentially return in the Aston Martin Racing V8 Vantage for food point racing in the season finale, our P36 driver on 53 points. Harry Spears retiring from the series on th in P37 on 53 points as well, Mattia Vacca in P38, Giovanni Izzo P39, and then Nesta Magia completing our top 40. Outside top 40 then, our last places all the way down to P50. It's the case of Lee King-McGee, Mike Krut, Alexander Shashinov, Cormac Ryan Meenan, Sanjay Belich, Alexei Yujigov, Artem Abakumov, Trond Erverland, Emil Blaine and, Ale and Alex Kopsov completing our order there and all looking for that opportunity. Should they still be racing as a tonight? All looking for that opportunity to get some key results on the board. And Mike Crew will not be joining us tonight, unfortunately, as he's not available to do so. But we hope to see the Britain returning as of the season finale. Now, as for our track tonight, we are at the WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca, based in Monterey, California, the United States of America. As may be seen from the circuit map here provided to us by Will Pittinger from wikipedia.org, this circuit consists of 11 corners, and do not let the diagram fool you. It looks as though this circuit has plenty of overtaking opportunity. It looks quite a wide circuit. Well, it's definitely not. It's got a very rough and abrasive road surface that does not offer as much grip as some of the more continental European circuits, perhaps, or indeed other circuits we have raced at in this series. And this track is known not just for its tightness or its abrasive road surface, but also for the corkscrew chicane corner. Turn number eight, which is a major drop over a six foot drop with a 16% gradient as well. The corkscrew corner, a very tricky one, and we'll definitely show you what it looks like from on board with one of our drivers a little bit later on in the proceedings tonight when we go into qualifying. As for our rules, our rules here are the same as they have always been for this series so far, and that is the balance of performance used for all cars featured in this series shall be the base 2019 variant as providing a set of course of competition we're not applying additional ballast i success ballast to any of the cars our drives are running based on that balance of performance and as for the race there are two mandatory pit stops which will require one liter of fuel to go into the car over the course of the two pit stops but changing tires is entirely optional and there's no defined pit window so drivers may choose when to pit but with that ladies and gentlemen those are all of our rules covered and as we look to the live pictures right now i believe our drivers are getting ready for that driver's briefing they're only approximately 40 to 50 seconds away before we hear the lovely tones of Kevin Smith as always and therefore it will be the case that when Kevin Smith gets us underway with that driver's briefing we'll be hearing the lay of the land and what the rules are for the proceeding tonight in fact we're going to sneak into the driver's briefing room right now and we're going to listen in
and just making sure I'm definitely muted so I don't end up deafening some of the drivers here whilst they're waiting for Kevin Smith's briefing and of course this briefing whilst you're not seeing it live on screen it's been done virtually through a internet voice over internet protocol service known as Discord it's the case that Kevin Smith will be giving our drivers the lay of the land as if this was a real world drivers briefing where all our drivers are in a single room and Kevin Smith at the head of the room effectively saying what's right and what's wrong for tonight but in the meantime whilst we are waiting I check in to the chat right now and we can see a Rafael Santa Barbara there and the YouTube chat enjoying the intro music and enjoying it proceedings excited for tonight by the looks of things and we can also see Governor ITR there in the Twitch chat saying hello and hope you're doing well indeed I am Governor I hope you're doing well as well and to all those of you are tuning in and we can see SnipeDog72 there in the Twitch chat as well saying awesome job on Sunday's race commenting that being for another series well thank you very much SnipeDog and I believe any moment now here we go for the briefing Good evening everyone and welcome back for round four of the next gen racing intercontinental championship as we take the Laguna Seca tonight just a couple of things to run over guys as you all know now there's a two mandatory pit stops tyre change is totally optional not to the drivers um, there is one late refuel minimum required for both pit stops for them to actually register in sim uh, we there will be a slight delay getting qualifying underway by a maximum of five minutes tonight unfortunately the stewards we usually use is having technical issues with his PC so we've had a last minute call in from the in grid for one of theirs um, and he'll be joining us very shortly so qualifying will start at the latest of 19.35 UTC guys so five minutes later than normal at most Return to garage will not be permitted at this round. Um, there's plenty of runoff areas to get yourselves off track if you are in the way of oncoming traffic during qualifying. And I believe the only other thing to run over is no queuing in qualifying in the final sector at all, guys. Please try and space yourselves out as much as possible on your outlaps of course because when people are queuing especially on such a short narrow twisty track like laguna the by the time the first guy's coming around to complete his flying lap there could be still people queuing in the final sector which we don't want of course and i believe that is it every everyone if anyone has any questions please put them in the general chat and i'll get them answered as soon as possible and Qualifying will get underway shortly, and good luck, everyone. You're free to leave the room. Yo, Killian, coming for you, bro. Alrighty then, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that was the uh, driver's briefing. And now as we return to the live pictures here, as we heard from Kevin Smith there, it is the case that there is going to be a potentially a slight delay to a proceeding tonight by approximately five minutes. And that is due to our, one of our stewards not being able to make it due to technical issues. So we are waiting on our backup steward to arrive. And it's the case we have a multifaceted stewarding team. Indeed, when one falls, another is there to jump in at the last moment, which is always good. We also heard there from Kevin Smith, who was saying that we with regards to a qualifying no return to garage out on circuit is permitted our drivers must pull back into the pit and park up in the pit lane before they can use return to garage to jump back to their pit slot at the earliest and that is of course because we've got plenty of runoff area at the Laguna Seca circuit what well, this circuit having a number of sand traps effectively or runoff areas into the sand so our drivers have got plenty of room to move out of the way by going off circuit rather than what we saw at Bathurst of course which was the case particularly in the mountainous region of the circuit so sectors two and three there it was the case it's very narrow and there's nowhere ready for anybody to go but that's what our drivers have been informed otherwise the rules are as they usually are and now we are only minutes away from qualifying and it looks as though so far in this final practice session it's George Booby who's the fastest man there but only five thousandths of a second over Luke Whitehead and indeed the ass heat driver from the United Kingdom returning in form and whilst it wasn't the ideal race for Booby last time out at Bathurst where he took a gamble on the strategy designed to pit very very early on for both of his pit stops and trying to undercut all of the field which saw him in the end finish well inside the top 10 he is looking as though he's quite a light tonight and whether he can pull off a win here and make himself the first of our back-to-back -back winners 
Oh, sorry, not back-to-back -back winners. My apologies. First of all, repeated winners in this series. We will have to wait and see as he makes his way right now up to the left hand of what is turn number six here. And as we saw from the circuit map, this circuit containing 11 corners, although it may not be immediately visible, the fact there's 11 corners here. Many would say there's only nine corners of this circuit, but we'll definitely take you through each and every one of those corners and explain where the additional two appear out of in terms of the corner classification in a brief period of time. But with George Boothby attacking the circuit right now, we look back to the pit lane and we can see the S&P racing esports driver here, a Daniel Sherapenin, who will be looking, of course, to try and get another brilliant result. I think it's going to be a podium and no less for Sherapenin tonight in order to give himself the best possible opportunity to keep that championship lead come the checkered flag going into the final round where it will be critical that he's got every point at his disposal. Will we see him potentially take his, his second win of the series and make himself our first repeated winner or will we see the Jota McLaren of Dow King Darren King in full, but referred to as Dow King based on his race name as he's currently parked in the pit lane there after winner at Bathurst. Will he not just be our first repeat winner, but also our first back-to-back -back winner in this series? And he would be our only back-to-back -back winner if he took the win tonight, given the fact then nobody else would be able to achieve the back-to-back -back wins over the course of the rest of the season. Well, it's all to play, but we could have a different winner entirely. Indeed, one driver right now who we do wonder what he's got in store is Tinko van der Velde, who after that absolute the blazing performance at Bathurst which is only held back in the end by the damage he picked up by hitting the wall going over the mountain on two occasions Tinker van der Velde really was the driver to catch but in the end it was mistakes and some damage which saw him drop down to P2 when all was said and done but we'll wait and see we do know the Team Tonky driver very very quick and will he be able to make that count tonight other drivers to watch out for, of course, a little bit further down the field. Cormac Ryan Meenan, the Ferrari driver here for FFS Racing. As we can see, the Irishman just coming down off the jacks right now. And, of course, his brother and his teammate, which is Cormac Ryan Meenan. not Cormac Ryan Meenan, Killian Ryan Meenan. I'm looking at Cormac, and here is Killian Ryan Meenan right now, making his way down through the corkscrew here. And it is the case. The two Ferrari drivers will be looking to get good results. And the brothers, of course, will be spurring one another along. No doubt about that, as he makes his way up towards turn number 10 right now. And as he comes on through, we can see it just a little bit more in the chat there. No further comments at this point in time, but indeed very exciting racing ahead. And do feel free to let me know in the chat. If you are tuning in right now, do not be shy. Feel free to say hi. We're all friendly here, of course. And it's the case whether you're on Twitch, YouTube or Facebook, we've got access to the chat so that way you can see what your thoughts are. Feel free to let me know who you're cheering on tonight, who you're predicting to potentially take the pole position here, or who you're predicting or rooting for to take the win. But it is looking as though at the moment it may be potentially be a sign of a Porsche lockout on that front row if George Booby and Luke Whitehead's pace is anything to go by because they are the best part of almost nine tenths clear of P3 man Leo Boulay here and the intruder racing team driver I will be honest with you ladies and gentlemen I'm hoping to see Boulay be able to bring a result home tonight that does not see him involved in some sort of instant or drama because he's got so much pace in that McLaren he's just not been given the opportunity to bring it to the checkered flag over the course of the two hours and when you're in that kind of a situation having been there myself as a sim racer is one of the most frustrating things in the world when you've got the pace to be there in the race but you just are not permitted to deploy it for circumstances which are outside of your control but indeed a number of drivers will know about damage limitation and having to find results when they're up against it and Harry Phillips the Wild Things racing Bentley driver there who was our runner-up in season two of the GT3 European Championship he will know about having to pull a result out of the bag indeed Harry Phillips known time and time again in the Bentley against adverse circumstances nonetheless no sorry none more so in the season finale in European GT3 season 2 where at the Nürburgring he was able to pull off a brilliant P2 finish by simply not changing tyres where everybody else did over the course of the two hours it was an uphill battle but he managed to do it and will we see Harry Phillips find a way to get that Bentley to finish well inside the top 10 well based on the practice pace right now that may not be the case but again practice is one thing qualifying is another and then the race distance of 90 minutes is an entirely different entity and will all of our drivers will be very aware of that but it's the case it's not over until you hit the checkered flag and everybody will begin at their all we have got down the circuit today approximately what is 33 drivers as they currently stand as we see a Giovanni Ezo here who in the Cortec racing machine and don't be fooled here it says S&P racing esports on the side it is the case that Ezo and the S&P racing esports Aston Martin are clipped into each other right now because this is quite a compact pit lane so we will see them separate out on circuit so don't be too confused about that one as we are here we've got our 34th driver join us and that is Pantera as well so drive still arriving as we are just waiting to get underway with 
qualifying. Vesfield as well here. The Porsche driver making his way through turn 10 right now. And the Porsche 911 driver from Switzerland here will be looking to have another good result. And we do know that Vesfield loves to play unconventional strategies as he makes his way out of the final corner and onto another lap. We would jump on board for that reference lap, but it will be the case. We'll very shortly be going into qualifying, so it'll be disrupted. And we'd love to have a nice, clean lap to bring you to be able to show you exactly what the ins and outs are here at Laguna Seca. The WeatherTech Raceway, of course, a track which has been raced at throughout the years in a number of series and perhaps the most prolific race of recent times would be in IndyCar where Roman Grosjean went for some very daring lunges into the corkscrew and some of those making contact with other drivers but indeed you do have to be a bit brave here at Laguna Seca to get moves made alternatively you'd be a bit brave when you hit the sausage curve there on the apex of turn number four and Vesfield showing what happens when you hit it a bit too hard with your right hand wheels you end up going into the stratosphere and you have to try and bring the car down rather rapidly but he was able to do so with a little bit of a run into the sand as he now makes his way up towards turn number six once again here as he makes his way around right now. It is looking as though the Porsche is quite strong here and we would expect the Porsche to be quite a strong car in qualifying based on the balance of performance and in the race if mastered and kept well within its limits it can be a very strong race car as we see Vesfield deciding to completely miss the corkscrew there. I think at this point in time just getting himself settled down now to go racing. As we look a little bit further around the order we can see Chris Sawyer. Of course Vesfield is old teammate from what was back in the European GT3 Season 1 with Next Gen and it's the case to see it Jeff Motorsport driver, the Swiss as well, a very collected and fast driver, and one of those drivers who does play it smart on the strategy. He may not be the fastest driver in terms of outright pace and qualifying, but if anybody's got a plan to try and jump his way up through the field, it's Chris Oiger as he makes his way through turn number five. And one of the two unconventional drivers in terms of strategy, well, that won't be according to strategy, getting it wrong there, coming out of turn number five as he moves out the way there and knocks the little freeboard for all its mercy as he makes his way back on the circuit there and just notices Tinker van der Veld. and that's one of the problems here as well at this circuit as you can see right now given how relatively short the lap is here and how tight the circuit is when you do get it wrong but in qualifying you're going to have to spend a long time trying to filter yourself back into the sequence of cars and that's what Kevin Smith was saying as part of the briefing was that it's one of those situations whereby you do not want to be that driver who ends up falling out of sequence or trying to queue up because if you try to queue up you will be given a warning and if you continue to queue and obscure other drivers you'll be given a penalty because this circuit comes around very quickly the run from turn nine through to turn at number 11 as well he gets it wrong a bit again there it's such a rapid run and if our drivers are found queuing there it is going to cause some major headaches of course as we can see Mahir Haratojo the Frenchman here from the Cosmos Racing Team Team KRT making his way right now all the way down from what was there I believe turn number five and up into six and as he comes through the left hander there just keeping it nice and smooth in the Ferrari 488 GT3 Evo as he comes over the crest into what is turn number seven before the court square at turn number eight and already given away where turn number seven is and perhaps you can guess where the other turn is the other elusive corner which is not really classified as a corner when you think of it as a conventional circuit but it's how we get to that grand total of 11 corners on this track but as we are continuing to wait right now we do say hello to Dennis Lislin there and we hope you're doing I'm sorry Lizin I should say not Lislin there's not two L's in that name and we hope you're doing well Dennis in the YouTube chat and you're keeping well as we are just waiting for qualifying to kick off it should be any moment now ladies and gentlemen we have got a slight further technical delay here and I believe that is the ongoing situation in just getting our additional steward into position right now but once they are there qualifying will be coming we are running at this point in time eight minutes behind schedule I suspect we'll be up to ten minutes behind schedule but just bear with us a little bit longer we will be going qualifying very shortly and when we do you can be sure it is going to be a fast dash to see who is going to be on pole as we look to Dylan Tam right now number 144 driver here just having a bit of a moment and the Singaporean the legion of racers drivers here hopping back to the pits and of course he's allowed to do this now because it is a practice session so long as he doesn't cause too many problems in terms of when he decides to hop back to the pits but of course that won't be permitted when we do go into a qualifying there as he's just now parked up and taking a look around the circuit still who else have we got making their way around we've got Christian Nembrini right now the Cortec Racing One driver and as he makes his way out to two and into three, we can see the Italian Stallion here coming through that right hander and just keeping it nice and smooth. This time we're going a little bit wide there. And that's one of the things as well about Laguna Seca. We have already seen it from a number of drivers here in this practice session. Because of the very tight limits of this circuit, you haven't really got any runoff areas in terms of tarmac based runoff areas. If you're going to go off, you go beyond the white lines or beyond the red and white curb, you end up going onto the sand. As soon as you do, that is going to cause the car to lose grip, lose traction as you try to get on the power. It is 
is the case the car is going to become unsettled very rapidly and as soon as it does where well, is the case you are battling against the torque of the engine power of the car and the weight of the car and I can only imagine the Aston Martin Vantage V8 is going to be one of those cars which is an absolute nightmare to try and bring back under control and you do need to do quite a bit of steering work and also throttle braking but in order to keep that car pointing in a straight line when it all goes wrong but Nembrini right now keeping it together as he comes to the end of this current practice lap and really for the Aston Martin driver at this point in time looking to get another solid finish on the board currently P22 in this final practice session and looking to try and get himself into that top 20 I think that'll be the target for Cortec tonight they will be looking to try and get both drivers well inside the top 20 and where is his teammate I hear you ask well Giovanni Izzo right now he's just parked in the pits albeit you can't see him because he's clipped inside the Bollers Esports Bentley there but it will be the case we will see the other Cortec racing driver take to the circuit in due course as we are now just waiting for that qualifying session but in the meantime whilst we look from one Cortec driver to another and back to the original we look a little bit further around and we can see that Rina FSJ here making his way down through turn number nine and I know his teammate Walter Lux who wasn't able to race tonight because he wasn't feeling too well it will be the case that Walter Lux will be watching his teammate and providing him support from the pit wall and it will be the case that the TG racing esports team very close at the Austrian outfit as we see FSJ here making his way out of the final corner out of the turn 11 hairpin and as he comes down towards what is the start finish line here and into the left hand kink which is classified as turn number one us giving away that other corner that you may not notice the left hand kink there of turn one which runs right alongside the pit exit indeed our drivers have to be careful not to cut too much of turn one because otherwise they will be subject to a track limits warning and also if there's a driver in the pits trying to come out they may even take the driver leaving the pits with them which they will not want to do because our stewards will not take that too kindly I can tell you now but right now Evan Stett making his way around here and indeed he will have the whole TG racing esport team's eyes on him as he makes his way around and of course all of their support as we also say hello to Matt Evans in the Facebook chat then we hope you're doing well Matt and you're having a good day and we are hearing from Ultra Gaming there in the YouTube chat saying not long until qualifying the other steward is almost ready well that's great to hear so we're not too far away from qualifying right now ladies and gentlemen I suspect we'll be getting underway within the next three to four minutes so that'd be my guess we're about 15 minutes behind schedule but still whilst we may be behind schedule right now I can tell you one thing our drivers may be behind the times they expected but they are itching to get behind the wheels of these machines and putting in those qualifying laps now what does it take to get a good qualifying lap here at Laguna Seca or a good lap at Laguna Seca? Well, ideally, you do not want to be caught behind another driver. That is one thing for certain because the loss of front and downforce, particularly from running in the dirty air of another car, well, it's just going to be a pain. Now, you could ask, well, what about if you catch up to a driver in the run from the final corner to the start finish line or going onto your lap if you're running behind the driver quite closely in the run down towards the Austin hairpin at turn number two? Well, it is the case you do not really want that because the amount of time you're going to gain by running behind the other driver in the run down towards turn two you're probably going to lose by having to fight the dirty air off the back of their car around the rest of the circuit even on the rubble straight going from turn six up towards turn seven eight it will be the case it's not going to give you the time back so a good lap here we'll see a driver find a good amount of clean air make sure their tires are up to temperature and then they've got to push their car to the limit just keep it within the track limits of course you do not want to overdo it and that's why right now Luke Whitehead is our fastest man in this practice session on a 120.680 just pipping George Booby in the end by 1.6 tenths of a second and as a result, Whitehead now perhaps the favourite, it could be argued, to, to get a good result here and indeed take the win. And Laguna Seca, will we see Whitehead finally take to the top step of the podium? He's pulled off a P2 already, and it will be the case. Can we see the Briton go all the way? Well, we'll have to wait and find out as we see him parked in here. And we can also see there in the YouTube chat, LCADC saying, go Reina FSJ, and that is good to see. A bit of cheering on for the TG Racing Esports team. And also MJK8 once again saying that Harry Phillips needs a new setup engineer. These lap times. Well, I think it's one of those cases where you just have to try try and find those results if you haven't quite got the lap time in the bag and again I do recall when we had those opportunities to post race interview Harry Phillips in season two of the European GT3 series when it was the case that he found himself off the pace he just simply when I asked him questions such as how about well how do you overcome that pace deficit it's just about keeping your head down the thing with Phillips is the one thing that he does better than most I'd argue is he drives to a pace now what I mean by that if you were to say to Harry Phillips right we know that you're up to and pace is at 1 minute 15 as we go into qualifying here ladies and gentlemen so we'll come back to that full in a brief moment as qualifying and now kicks off and all of our drives will go out onto the circuit for 15 minutes to try and see who is going to be on pole as they all just gradually make their way on out but what I 
was going to quickly say with regards to Harry Phillips, if you give him a lap time to target, he will keep all the laps within that target very nicely indeed. And that is what gives him the advantage in the longer races. He knows how to run to a particular lap time. Much like the great legends of, say, Formula 1, such as Michael Schumacher, one of his ultimate traits was his ability. If he was told he needed to do 10 laps in a row, all within one-tenth of a second of a particular target, he would do it. And Phillips, in that similar vein, indeed a number of individuals here, but Phillips embodies that consistency like no other as now qualifying really does commence and it is Dylan Tan who is towards the front of our order but I believe right at the head of this pack right now that is Sheriff Pinning who is leading our drivers around on this opening warm-up lap here with the SP racing esport driver here he is our championship leader he does have that right to be the first man out on circuit based on where he's located in the pit lane and as he makes his way out to six and up the hill on the rubble straight up towards turn seven eight the little right hand kink before the corkscrew chicane of turn number eight as he makes his way into the chicane right now we can see that it's the case the SP racing esport driver really going on the offensive around here and in fact we're going to jump on board with him so we get our opening guided lap of this circuit so as he makes his way down into turn number 10 he's now heading towards the final corner now coming up towards turn 11 he will need to get the ideal exit here he'll want to get on the throttle as soon as possible and push the car through the corner he does indeed that and now four on the throttle coming out there and charging up towards the timeline to go onto our first flying lap of the qualifying session Flat out then, up the rise here, and through the left-hand kink at turn number one before coming downhill into the braking zone for the Austin Hairpin at turn two. Breaking at the free board there, and as he comes down for the double apex corner, keeping it nice and symmetrical as he gets on the power on the exit of two, and now charges up towards turn number three. A delayed corner here, a very late apex, a hidden apex, and as he comes through down the gears to second gear, and now going back up through the gears into turn number four, and just a light dab of the brakes to rotate the car in there with the brake bias being towards the rear of the car, it would seem, and as he charges through four and up into five, now coming into the bank's left hand here, breaking at that two marker, the 100 meter marker, and just bringing it nicely around. And as soon as he hits that apex, feeding the throttle in before now charging up the hill towards the left hander at turn number six. Coming into left hander here, it's unsighted initially in that braking zone, but you have to have the faith to throw the car in. He chucks the car in and gets on the power beyond apex. And now up the rubble straight into the right hand kink of seven before braking for the corkscrew here. And ready, ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your lunch as he comes down the rise there and as he makes his way now down towards turn number nine for the throttle before lifting off and coasting the car into turn number nine, getting back on the throttle and then charging into the light braking zone to turn 10. All about dipping the car into the apex there as he gets through the corner. Now the heavy braking zone of 11 weights. Now he'll want to really push into that apex. You can see a nice tight line there. Gets on the throttle, lets the throttle push the car around. And now as he makes his way up towards the timing line, it's been a good opening lap for Sheriff Penning. What's it going to be on our timing screens? It's a 22.3. But it's the case that already Dylan Tang goes a bit faster. They were 22.2 as all of our drivers laps now start to come on in and as they do we've got plenty of laps out there as all our drivers are making their way around we do have taken to the circuit 34 drivers as it currently stands here indeed out of our starting number of drivers of 50 at the start of this league to see 34 taken to the Laguna Seca circuit and a good number of the drivers not able to make it tonight due to health reasons or personal circumstances you can imagine that we are retaining a huge number of our drivers and it is great to see so many taken to the American circuit tonight as all those lap times are continuing to come in and we're just taking a look at the Nordic Racing Team driver, the NRT driver of Andreas Sorensen here, one of the two Danes racing for NRT, the other driver being Emil Blaine of course, and as Sorensen makes his way out the final corner, what's it going to be for the Aston Martin Racing driver, he crosses that timing line, and it is going to be, well at the end of the day, it is a 24.9, so find himself a good 3.3 seconds off of that provisional pole pace, and it's the case that Luke Whitehead right now, our fastest man after the opening lap here, the Briton at 21.605, but we have seen faster and that's not to be rude about his lap but we saw faster in the build up to tonight in the practice sessions and it is the case that Whitehead now looking to go even faster than this but right now Whitehead striking first blood in qualifying and it will be the case that if he can maintain this as Tan improves to P2, Dylan Tan, only one and a half tenths off a of Whitehead right now. Could we see the Singaporean find a way to shock everyone? Tan has been a little bit of an underdog in this series, but as we can see, Whitehead comes across that timing line. This time he does not improve. He goes onto another lap here. I think that was a warm up lap or a little bit of a quasi warm up cool down lap between his opening flying lap and this one as he makes his way around the circuit in the number 21 car. And I do believe a number of Porsche drivers here watching Whitehead very closely to see what he's able to do as he makes his way around and we jump on board as he makes his way up towards turn number four 
as he comes through the right hand here, balancing that throttle. He goes a little bit wide there, carrying a bit too much speed, but he, plow he powers through it. And as he makes his way out towards five here, he commits the entry into five. He's going to carry on with the slap despite the mistake. And I can tell you right now on the weather radar, we're not expecting any rain today whatsoever. It's a nice sunny day in California, as it always seems to be on the west coast of the United States. And as he makes his way out of six and up towards seven, in towards that breaking zone for the corkscrew right now, as he comes through the king to seven, into the heavy breaking zone and makes his way now down through the drop here and as he comes through you can just see the balance he's having to maintain on the car to keep it pointing a straight line through the corkscrew here and as he makes his way up towards 10 right now we've just seen how much momentum he can carry through the corner here as he goes a little bit wide there as a result of the momentum he carried through but he's kept the car nicely tucked in through the corners and as he makes his way out of 11 this is looking another very smooth lap from Whitehead will it be an improvement on his previous best he comes across the line here and it's an improvement to a 21.0 he improves by six tenths and i reckon if it were not for that small mistake coming out of turn four that would have been our first 20.9 of the session whitehead is looking very strong here in qualifying will he pull this off i think right now it's going to be very close for he between him and perhaps george booby if we see booby put in a lap time like he did in the final practice in the build-up to this but we will have to wait and see as where is george booby i hear you ask well here he is and as he crosses that timeline he goes provisional p2 and he's six and a half tenths of a whitehead but i do wonder right now because that is his first lap from the gas heat driver whether he's taking some of the fuel out of the car he's got the tires warmed up on that opening flying lap oh, he's used that as his banker lap which for a banker that puts him right up there in the order already now he's going to go on the offense of the ass heat driver i think whitehead's going to have to keep an eye on those timing lines i do not think it's going to be the case he's going to have it all his own way but he's definitely looking strong and the porsche drivers looking strong here but indeed it is the case that dylan tan then our first non-porsche driver in p3 and tan really putting on a sleeper performance right now as we continue to look around the field as we can see Killian Ryan Mean and meanwhile down in P13 that's point in time the FFS racing driver here the Irishman flash and his lights he's got some traffic and I believe that was the wall of racing machine moving out of the way as we see a meet Ryan Mean and make his way down and indeed his teammate also within there so the two teammates together on circuit now how can they use this to their advantage I hear you ask well what one of them can do if he finds that he's on an off lap he can always try and give a bit of toe to his teammate it looks as though in fact Cormac moves out of the way they trade places and I think Cormac now is going to be the number two driver here who will gain from that toe is actually call back into the pits as George Booby also comes into the pits as well got a bit of a yellow flag out on circuit I think that might be where a driver has got it wrong and parked up somewhere on the track and we'll be returning soon as we see Ryan Meenan Killian Ryan Meenan improves to P8 there he's down to a 22.1 a good lap there but he finds himself just over a second down on our provisional pole lap but still I do reckon our top 10 in the end is going to be separated by the region of a second so Ryan Meenan putting himself in good contention right now as in fact he's in P7 and have we had a disconnect from other drivers I think we have lost a driver because he was P8 and now he's gone up to P7 but we'll wait See, that might be a glitch on our timing screens to be fair as we still got seven minutes to go in this session now in the build up to tonight i did have the opportunity to catch up with a couple of drivers down in the pit lane before they were getting into their cars for the final practice session although to be fair a lot of them a little bit silent alternatively i couldn't quite get close enough to them i think because they're so focused on their strategies and whatnot but i had the chance to catch up with the second of the two danes from the nrt nordic racing team and that's emil blaine always the lovely chap to talk to the number 664 driver a very nice guy and if you do have a have the chance to have a chat to him i can tell you he is a fantastic gentleman and also a racer but as for emil blaine what did he have to say going in tonight is the big question well what he had to say to me with regards to not just this race but also the season so far is that he's found the season today quite frustrating in the fact that having started both suzuka and bathurst at the back because he wasn't able to put in a good lap in qualifying it was the case that instance in the early in the race particularly hard crashes saw his well his performances go from good to bad to even worse as he makes his way out to turn six they're getting it wrong and immediately moves off the race line moves off circuit there as we can see leo boulet has got one of the bentley's tucked in behind him and i think that is bletchich there as he makes his way down through the corkscrew but focusing back on blaine once again here as he returns to the racing line it is the case that after those incidents it was a disappointing start to his season indeed the first half of the season and we had to take a step back for a couple of days and regain some confidence 
Well, nonetheless, he's excited for this race at Laguna Seca. Indeed, he's coming back full of confidence, and he's sure it's going to be a fun one. He does love the circuit as it presents a unique challenge on the calendar, and his aim for this one is to qualify better and keep it consistent through the race. He'll see whether the plan will work out in the end, but he's going to try and enjoy this one as much as he possibly can, and hopes he can finish the season with a strong run in the last two races. And indeed, Emil Blaine being our, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, our most improved driver in the European GT3 Championship season two. He picked up that award for a brilliant string of performances that really came about in the midpoint to the end of the season, none less so than the Moses manoeuvre he did pull off at Monza, which will go down in history in the next gen racing series as one of those moves that you will never want to miss. But right now, as we've got a Cosmos Racing Team machine spun there, and I think that's Vezfield also involved or close by as Vezfield now brings himself back up to speed. Now, I'm not 100% sure what's happened there. Unfortunately, we can't have a look back, but it does look as though one of the Cosmos Racing Team machines was sideways, and Vezfield around that, I think he was trying to take some evasive action in but he's brought it back together right now has the itr driver as he makes his way up the hill towards the corkscrew once again and as he does so in the meantime i can tell you that everything is proceeding as planned right now for Luke Whitehead and George Vuvi, albeit Whitehead still six and a half times clear at the top of the field and Vesfield our third Porsche driver in terms of placement in the standings well, he'll be looking to try and get himself onto that second row because if he can be up there, one of the weaknesses of the Porsche, of course, is its straight line capacity in terms of straight line speed. But around a circuit such as Laguna Seca, the straights are not long enough for that to become an issue. And as a result, if he can out-qualify the cars around him, particularly the likes of Andrews Mesa in the very beastly and powerful Aston Martin Vantage V8 here, which will have the straight line acceleration, but it won't quite have the cornering by comparison with the Porsche with the engine being in the front and therefore the weight being dominated towards the front of the car where the Porsche Porsche has got the weight towards the rear, with the engine being in the middle of the car, as we like to call it, but more towards the rear, mid-engine rear-wheel drive. It is the case that really the Porsche drivers will want to out-qualify their peers, so that way they can have that positional advantage, and the Porsche can be made quite wide. But I say positional advantage, another mid-engine rear-wheel drive car to watch out for is the Ferrari, and it is the case that Dylan Tan right now moves up to P2. He just pitched George Boothby there by 100 per second, and will it be the case that a legion of racers driver here has his best qualifying performance of the season? With three minutes to go this is looking very lightly and I think the number 144 car here really putting on a strong display as the time continues to tick down and another driver I did have the chance to catch up with and time is ticking down for him in this qualifying session is Nesta Magia here as the Ectemo Rasket racing driver the El Salvadorian racing under the flag of the United States of America here so this is quote unquote his home race based on the flag that he's displaying with the car it is the case that Nesta Magia as he makes his way around well what did he have to say in preparation tonight I hear you ask well for him what he had to say is that he's he quite enjoys this track in terms of he's good at this track but he doesn't enjoy it in terms of the overall fun factor it's not a circuit which i think he likes to race at but he finds he's good at it when he does race at it his plan is to keep it on the black stuff and set consistent lap times the black stuff being the tarmac of course and he's pretty gutted with what happened at bath first as he was in line for a top 20 but the car went sideways into the dipper and as a result he could not avoid but in experiencing an incident and he had to pit to repair his completely broken suspension well nesta magia will be looking to try and turn things around tonight and try to pull off a good result will he be able to do so well qualifying right now is not going well he's four seconds off of that provisional pole lap and indeed to get himself into that top 20 right now he needs to take 2.3 seconds out of his personal best lap time and well he's got time to do it he's got one more lap after this he'll just come around to go on to another lap he'll just about cross it there as all of the drivers now are trying to surge around to make those final laps count as we do see there's the Magia here going across that timeline does he improve and not this time so he's going to have it all to do then on his final flying lap but looking from him back up towards our leader right now in this qualifying session and we can see looking towards the top of the field there's no real major change in that top 10 although I say that and it is the case that we've just had what is Christian Krivik here move up to P17. The Dragons eSport driver has moved up as Pushkrev has got up behind him in P18. But the Dragons eSport driver in the number 999 car right now constantly putting in these good midfield performances. I think he's one to watch out for if there are some incidents towards the start of the race because he'll try to gain as much as he possibly can. And we know he's one of those silent but deadly types in terms of being able to gain major places when all the attention is on the drivers getting it horribly wrong. But as he makes his way through turn 10 and up towards 11 right now, it's the case that Courage just continue to push on as we are just waiting to see how this plays out. Well, it's the case that Dylan Tan has come into the pits here and that is his qualifying over. And George Booby has picked him back into P2. 
And it's the case of Yas Heatro, who's on one more flying lap. He's improved to now be four and a half tenths of a Whitehead. But I think Whitehead has got this one in the bag. Unless Booby can pull off a miracle lap here come the end of session. As Whitehead finally makes it a 20.9. We thought it was coming. And he's finally got it done here. And the PPR eSports driver has finally broken into the 20s. Now, will Boothby or anybody else respond here? I think it is the case. It's all wrapped up unless this man who we're looking at can find a miracle in this final lap. When he makes his way down, he's got a bit of traffic ahead of him, but it doesn't look as though the traffic's going to be too close. The Armentel Red Ferrari there just a bit far away. He will get the toe here to the finish line of the distant machine up the road. That's Chris Zoyga. And as Boothby comes across the line, is it going to be an improvement? He improves, but it's not enough for the Britons. So it means he will not be taking pole position. Will we see anybody else improve here? Well, we have Sobolov here in the, the S&P Racing Eastport machine that's backing off, so he can't improve as he's just finished. What about Dow King? Well, Dow King making his way here down towards turn 10. The Joe to McLaren flying strong here. The highest place McLaren in this qualifying session so far as we are waiting for those final laps to come in here. And King makes his way through the final corner. Can he get himself onto the second row at least? He's one and a half tenths of Sobolov right now. He comes across that timeline and what's it going to be? It's not enough to improve, so King can only qualify P5 in the end. And meanwhile, what about Vesfield? Well, he's in the pit. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I do think it is the case that it is all said and done in the shootout for pole. And it is Luke Whitehead who has taken his first pole position in this series with a 20.982. Two tenths clear of his fellow Porsche driver and competitor, George Ruby. And it's Dylan Tan and Zabolov who are lined up on that second row. As more laps are coming in right now, but most of our drives are finished. As we've got Kevin Gellin here who's just crossed line and improved to P20 and all said and done the Frenchman there just creeping into the top 20 but that is qualifying and my goodness this series continues to deliver shake-ups and now we get ready to go racing as all of our drivers get ready to go here and we just wait for the switch over to the well to what is the formation of the grid and as we can see the grid has now formed and well what a qualifying session to have at Laguna Seca as we see Luke Whitehead there sitting firmly in pole position in the end and I think that will bring a huge smile to his face and the fact that it's come and this is his ultimate opportunity to now go on to try and take the win as we look on board with the Porsche driver here as he just waits patiently for that five minute countdown before we get underway with the double file for formation lap but however will George Booth be here our driver who took the win at Suzuka will he take the win off of Whitehead I think it's going to be settled initially in the run through the first couple of corners or will we see the driver behind here Dylan Tan the Singaporean in the Ferrari 488 will he be able to spring a surprise we know how strong that Ferrari can be off the launch particularly in first and second gear but will he be able to make it work as he will have to watch out for Zabolov who qualifies alongside him here in P4 and we know the one thing about the SM race in eSports team is they are very very determined to make sure their drives continue to finish up towards the top of the order and Zabolov there a good team player as well as a solo racer and he starting P4 will want to use that engine power in the Aston Martin racing advantage of V8 to try and get himself ahead of Tan at least going into the opening corners will he be able to do so that is the question but as we look a little bit further down the field right now on the heli cam, we can see Dow King there and Killian Ryan Meenan lining up on that third row. And it's Vesfield and Andres Mesa on row at number four as we continue to look down our order. Daniela Sherapin in having a rather weak qualifying session here. Our championship leader out of position, it could be argued, qualifying P9. Now, I do wonder here whether it's just the case that the McLaren driver not feeling too comfortable or whether he's going for a performance in the race rather than qualifying. But it's not been a strong qualifying performance. And this is not, I think, what he would have wanted when always said and done and alongside it was Marcus Fox who's crept into the top 10 and watch out for the Austrian because he may try to outlast everybody on the tyre compound that's the one thing Fox is very good at he can make those tyres on that Porsche last a very long time meanwhile on our sixth row we've got Dennis DeMarco and Tinker van der Velde and van der Velde out position as well I'd say the McLaren drivers not having a good day at the office of the McLaren perhaps not suiting this circuit as much as the Porsche and the Ferrari as then we have Christian Krivik and also Leo Boulay line up on row at number seven Boulay qualifying P14 he'll try to make his way up and indeed the Dragons eSport driver Kirit also trying to make his way up and then in on row number eight we have got Harry Phillips and Matteo Cervalone there and it's the case the Bentley driver well that Bentley's got very strong low RPM band acceleration and we expect that Phillips is going to be fast off the line but he will be found wanting on the small straights here will it be the opportunity for Cervalone to jump ahead of him or will the Ferrari driver have to tuck in behind come the run out of turn two and Matteo Vacca there completing our well, sorry starting our row number nine alongside Chris Zoyga and Cormac Ryan Meenan there on the 
the 10th row on P19. Alongside him, Push Karev completing our top 20. Just pipping Kevin Gellin, who starts off our 11th row. As we see there, the Frenchman parked in P21. Benjamin Asili in P22 alongside him. And then we've got Christian Nembrini, P23. With Sil Pantera on P24. And then we've got Mahir Haratojo, P25. Alongside him, Alexei Yujigov, P26. And as we come down to row number 14, Luca Filippi and Mikhail Vratel line up alongside one another there. And then we've got Reina Effenstadt and also Emil Blaine line up on row number 15. And then completing our, well, it's the case that completing our penultimate row, we have got Sanjin Bellic and also Andreas Sorensen and in our last row consisted Nesta Magia and Giovanni Izo and Izo not able to take part in qualifying the end as I've come to understand it instead of Izo having to start from the back as we now wait then for that countdown to be complete it is the situation as we wait patiently for our drivers to go racing and well we are just checking in with our stewards right now who have given us the thumbs up to say all is green to go from a racing perspective here well we will be bringing you any of those stewarding decisions as they come on in i'm just making sure i've got full access to the stewards briefing notes and indeed their decisions as we say hello to magia nesta 98 there in the twitch chat who is if you are wondering that is nesta magia who is currently in the car and he's just briefing saying hello and i think you'll be focusing back on the racing very shortly we say hello to you nesta we hope you're doing well and good luck in your race today and indeed good luck to all of our drivers but as we bring the cameras back down right now well it's the case it is a huge opportunity for this man the number 21 driver of luke whitehead can he find a way to bring home the win from pole position over the course of the 90 minutes place your bets ladies and gentlemen but i think if he can now the start of this race he is looking very strong remember it's two mandatory pit stops one liter of fuel has to go in the car whether our drivers change their tyres or not is entirely up to them but given the level of tyre degradation that we typically see at Laguna Seca I think we could be seeing a number of drivers resort to a tyre change in order to give themselves that fresh compound come at the midpoint or the later point of the race but with 10 seconds to go as our drivers finish setting up their cars you can see most of their drivers now coming down off the jacks there as they are fully set tyre pressures up as high as they can tyres coming out of the jackets out of the blankets it's now time for Whitehead and George Booby to take us away from the front row as we do see that we have starting from the pits in fact I believe leave that is starting from the pits is that christian Nembrini? no that is not Nembrini. that is giovanni Izo, who's decided to start from the pits to keep himself out of traffic so as our drivers now pull away it is okay so we've got an ambient temperature of 17 degrees centigrade here the track conditions are optimal the sun is shining we have a little bit of wind across the circuit although not at the moment and as for our track temperature it's 23 degrees centigrade it is five minutes past three in the afternoon we are expecting the ambient temperature to stay relatively the same as it is now but track temperature is likely to pick up a bit once our drives go racing at full pace they need optimal conditions here and it's going to be one of those situations where we're not seeing any rain on the radar we are seeing sunshine and the occasional bit of cloud perhaps over the course of the 90 minutes based on our current predictions and as the world drives make their way around right now they will all be thriving at this opportunity to enjoy the conditions here after two races but Tilly Bathurst last time out where it was a deluge of rain and now we are in those clear conditions which a lot of our drivers really do love as we see Tinko van der Veld here making his way around on this formation lap and as he comes on through with Leo Boulay alongside him there is the case the two McLaren drivers I think will try to avoid one another when I say avoid one another, of course, not make contact, but also on top of that, try to avoid hampering one another on the opening laps and work together to gain at some places as they all make their way on through. But one driver who we didn't talk about with a good qualifying session, in fact, Dennis DeMarco here, the Ferrari driver from Team Bullers Esport, as he makes his way along. And we can see there, as always, Fox Marcus Fox running with him. All of our drivers just making their way up towards turn at number six right now. And as they do so, the leader's already through, all trying to get temperature into those tyres as Dennis DeMarco finds himself a little bit out of his positional order. As we look a little bit further back in the bright yellow esports racing zone Bentley of Sanjin and Belich here I'm sorry Belichic I should say making his way down towards turn number six right now in the number three car as all our drivers start to roar their way around the circuit here and indeed as we look from the rear of the field to towards the front Oleg Zabolov will be looking the Russian driver here to have a strong result can he convert it into a potential podium from a starting point of P4 we will have to wait and see as they all now start to bunch up down into turn nine and coming up towards turn ten we continue to look at the front of the field here as it will be Whitehead who gets us away very soon as he comes through turn right now and of course he will take us to the green which will be on the start finish straight as he makes his way up towards the hairpin but meanwhile Dow King behind there in P5 I'm sure he has got a plan in mind as to how he can potentially snatch a podium if not the win from this one as they all come down towards what is the final corner as they make their way through we wait for Luke Whitehead to take us away for pole position
And it's lights out and away we go for round number four here at Laguna Seca in the Intercontinental GT Championship as they charge down through one and into two. Booby trying to go round the outside here as they make their way into the heavy braking zone. But as they all come on in there, we can see DeMarco looking for the move as well as there's quite the concertina effect into the braking zone. And all of our drivers come on through here. We can see it's the case that DeMarco trying to gain ground as they all come charging out towards turn on three. There's contact between DeMarco and Fox and that clips what looks to be a no other cars. And that is one of the McLarens, I believe, as all the drivers now make the way on through. There's some drivers dropping down the order here as it looks like so we've got a car returning to the circuit very gingerly but as they all make the way down now through turn four and in towards five we look back up towards the leaders and right now it's the case that our leaders are as they were nobody really gaining here but there's been a little bit of contact on the open lap already and DeMarco involved in that contact with Marcus Fox as well and I think it was a bit of a chain reaction there coming up into three with DeMarco being tapped by Fox and DeMarco being sent sideways into one of our cars now who was impacted by that well it was not Leo Boulay this time who's in a bit of a side by side but oh goodness me and there was some contact there with what it was I believe that was Vaca as we can see Leo Boulay coming across the circuit like, like a missile and I think that's through the contact and Boulay just once again ending up in a scenario where he's been involved in an instant as we see Vaca here into P14 and well, I think the stewards are going to be taking a look at that one but as our drivers make their way around right now it is the case that after one lap as he comes across that start finish line it is Luke Whitehead leading by what is only three tenths of a second ahead of George Booth in fact one second entirely there's the time screen's updated ahead of George Booth in P2 then it's Dylan Tan in P3 followed by Oleg Zabolov in P4 then we've got Dow King in P5 staying as they were Vesfield in P6 as Killian Ryan Mina in P7 then we've got Dennis DeMarco in P8 followed behind by Marcus Fox here Fox gaining ground but we do wonder whether there might be a little bit of a cloud hanging over his head with the contact with DeMarco earlier on at this corner at turn number three on the opening lap then we've got Tinko van der Velde in P10 followed by Andres Mesa in P11 then Matthias Servalone in P12 leading the second pack really right now as we can see behind him Harry Phillips all over the back as we ride on board here with a Bentley driver who's trying to find his way on through into that position as he goes defensive here versus Vaca who you can see in the rear view mirror back and looking for the move and going for the cutback as they come through the corners now as they make the way through five and up into six there's not going to be too much of an overtaking opportunity here but Phillips already finding himself under pressure as the lead Bentley driver as they come out of six and up towards seven and eight up towards the corkscrew but likely no change at this point in time as they make the way into the heavy braking zone once again but you can see up ahead Andrews Mesa trying to find a way to get past Tinker van der Velde as they make the way down into turn number nine he's going for the move into the left hander and it's the case the distinct GG driver from Spain gets the move done and van der Velde not defending that one too hard I think realising that you know what it's only three minutes in if that there's no need to heavily defend right now because you can see us looking behind there goodness me and Harry Phillips falling back as we've got cars going left right and centre there that's one of the KRT machines clipping one of the Ferraris and I believe that's Matthias Servalano who's almost been knocked into the pits and the SPQR racing driver there involved in contact with the KRT driver now who is the KRT driver I hear you ask that's Benjamin Asselli as they make their way back up towards speed and the Cosmos racing team driver now I think having a bit of a moment and it's the case that Sevalani into the pit after that contact so one's been able to survive the contact the other's got damage and needs to pit early well that is a disaster for Sevalani but can he turn it into an undercut we'll have to wait and see as meanwhile we look back up through the field and we can see that Cormac Ryan Meaden here in P15 as the FFS racing driver here presses on chasing down Chris Sawyer as they make the way up towards turn at number five once again no way through this time as all of our drivers push on through but you can see there Harry Phillips losing out considerably and I do wonder what's happened to Phillips because he's dropped out to Vaca and I think there might have been a little bit of an instant or some sort but he's found his way past Chris Sawyer in all of this but really right now the Wild Things racing driver we'll wait and see if anything comes in while stewards who will be frantically looking back at things but it is the case that right now as we see Chris Sawyer getting it wrong under break in there and going very very wide of the corner and as he returns here under race pace it is the case that Christian Ambrini and also the Armatel Red Ferrari of Pushgrev will come on through to take P15 P16 respectively as you see Pushgrev here looking for the move on the inside it's not going to be the case he has to follow in formation as they make the way roaring down through 10 and in towards 11 where well, it's the case arms and elbows are coming out very early in this race I think there might be some poking out a little bit too far as we see there Pushgrev getting a very poor exit out of the final corner and so I guess going to look for the move here this is the battle for P16 as they make their way on towards where it's turn number two they come down towards the Austin hairpin and as they make their way into the left hander right now will it be the case that Zoya gets the move done push is going to try and hold it around the outside but you can see Luca Felipe looking for the move here the Waller racing drive from Germany not hesitating to try and turn it into a two for one special but as they make their way up in towards turn number three and the camera follows them through it is the case that the Luca, uh, Luca has to wait for that opportunity now as they make their way around once again but already we are starting to see the field break into 
packs as our drivers make their way around after only five minutes of this 90 minute race and I think now it may settle down a little bit and we are going to see our drivers now start to focus more on their strategies with those initial overtakes being made or at least attempted and what's paid off now will work to our driver's advantage and it hasn't paid off they'll need to do it on the strategy or search for an opportunity a little bit later on but we have seen already some major incidents in this race and indeed some difficulty for a number of drivers as we look a bit further up the field right now and we can see the ITR driver here Vincefield staying in P6 as he was and it is the case just looking right now that Joe to McLaren he's also got to be aware of the fact that Killian Ryan mean and is creeping a bit closer lap after lap as they make their way up towards that timing line and as they go on to what for them is now lap number five it is the case no change between these two but Ryan mean and definitely looking the more aggressive of the two cars there if you look at the Ferrari versus the Porsche and indeed not just in terms of the profile of the car but also the way the Irishman is approaching the corners here really taking those aggressive lines as he makes his way on Ferrari I think he's going to be looking for the move in the near future because of the way he is on that offensive as we see Dow King there trying to find a way past the back mark of the SPQR car which is a back mark at the moment that's Servalone who remember had that pit stop due to damage picked up and this is a horrible horrible situation to be in so early on the race both for Servalone and also for Dow King now blue flags here of course have to be obeyed much like at any other circuit but it is the case such a tight circuit here at Laguna Seca obeying the blue flags can be difficult particularly in the run from say turn five up towards six but you can see in the end Servalone moves out the way and meanwhile Vesfield well he has got that pressure and you can see that Ryan Mina looking for the move on the outside here into the corkscrew he's not going to find it this time but it is the case that Ryan Mina really put in that pressure on as we ride on board here with the FFS racing driver as he comes through turn number nine now I think it may be the case that Ryan Mean has decided to underfuel the car by comparison with Vesfield in front. We do normally see Vesfield opt for the higher fuel strategy. He'll try and put as much fuel in the car in the race, at the start of the race, to give him that longevity. Whereas Ryan Mean in here, I think, has gone for a more aggressive setup on the car. As we can see there, the SPQR driver of Silverlane moving out the way very gradually, but not. Well, he's moved away out of the way a bit too early as Ryan Meenan comes on through as well. And he's not able to capitalise his Vesfield holds on to the position and holds the time ahead. But Ryan Meenan definitely attacking under braking into the Austin hairpin. And once again here as they make their way through on lap number six. Now as these drivers make their way through and no change between at this point in time. We look a little bit further back and we can see here Mahe Haratojo, the Cosmos Racing Team driver, the KRT driver, chasing after Luca Felipe here. And we do have the Ferrari train which has got Pushgrev at the head of it and it's Haratojo at the rear of it. And then you've got State breaking up another free Ferrari. Ferrari drivers behind and that's the three Ferrari drivers of Kevin Gellin who we're now looking at the ITR driver who is one place up from where he started he's gained a position since the start of the race albeit a bit of contact and damage on the front of that Ferrari by the looks of things I do wonder if he was involved in one of those instants earlier on as he goes a bit wide there out of four but keeps it together he might be battling with some suspension damage as he makes his way through even aero damage and as he makes his way through the corners right now you can see he's ahead of Pantera and Rattel all in the single picture there Indeed, the Ferrari army soldiering around the Laguna Seca circuit right now. As a bit further down the order, I can tell you that Andreas Sorensen is closing up to the back of Sanjin Berlik as they make their way down towards turn number six. He's not going to be able to go for the move this time. And we'll blame behind him as well. And I think it might be the case the Nordic racing team drives it. We're going to see Sorensen going for the move here. This is for P23 as they come up in towards the court screw. Now, surely he's going to have this all said and done under break. And he's got it wrong. And what it means is the drivers come through. There's Emil Blaine coming through the picture. As we can see, Sorensen and also Bletchley and returning to the circuit and Sorensen giving the place back immediately the sportsmanship they're being shown but I do think it's the case that right now the Bentley driver will be frustrated that both of them have lost two places for that bit of contact as now it's Emil Blaine who is the lead NRT machine as they make their way down but Bletcher just got it wrong there on the run out of 10 and into 11 he's gone deep and we can see Sorensen gains the place in the end but I think the Croatian is a bit unsettled by what happened earlier on in the lap as they go on to another lap here and the places change here Sorensen up to P25 Bletcher down to P26 Blaine up to P24 and Aseli up to P23 as they all continue to make their way around. In fact, Benjamin Aseli getting the move done there on what was Emil Blaine into turn number two. We didn't quite see that on camera, but Aseli gaining the position here in the Cosmos Racing Team driver trying to press on. I think he feels that he's a bit out of formation right now as he makes his way down towards turn number four. But you can see Blaine trying to find a way back already as they make their way out of four and up towards five. But they say both decide to take a little bit of a rally cross approach there to the exit of turn number four. They come into that braking zone right now. 
no change for the time being. But meanwhile, looking from them to, well, in fact, looking a little bit further back, we can see Sorensen here. Now, this is an awkward situation. It's two teammates almost side by side. You can see Sorensen really wants to get a move on here, but it is the case. Run out towards turn six is the one corner you don't go side by side through, but that's because Emil Blaine has run off circuit there. So I was going to say, where enough has Emil Blaine gone? He can't just make an Aston Martin disappear, but he's gone a bit wide there out of turn. Number six, in fact, has to go a bit deeper. There's Nesta Magia tries to go around the outside of the corkscrew, and Magia will gain in another place. He's up to P27 as we see Harry Phillips there. Well, Phillips has dropped down the order somewhat, and I believe he's already cleared a pit stop here, and I think Phillips has decided to go for a long undercut, much like a good number of drivers have already. We can see that Phillips, Krich, also Sheriff Penin, also Servalone, and the, well, the McLaren we saw have that horrific moment coming out of three and going wide and having to rejoin very gently. It is none other than what is our championship leader, Daniel Sheriff Penin, and this is a disaster for his championship so far, because the SMP Racing Esport driving out is tucked in behind Krich as they make the way out of turn 11 and up towards another lap here, and Sheriff Penin will now need to do damage limitation for this race, because it has not worked out at all as he makes his way down towards turn number two once again. But we look from him back up towards our leader, and we can see our leader right now ahead of George Booby here. One and a half seconds the delta between the two of them, but they have broken away from the rest of the field as he goes on to what is lap number nine for our race leader. Now the question is, of course, we saw this happen at Suzuka a bit. George Booby was the lead driver and then it was our Mercedes driver at the time competing with him who was right behind him but unfortunately it was one of those situations whereby the challenger against Booby in the end will Booby just simply outsmarted his challenger on the strategy and emerged out the pits after the two pit stops eight seconds clear and ran it to the finish. Will we see the Yas Heat driver here pull off another strategic masterclass or will Whitehead have his equal measure? Well we'll have to wait and see as meanwhile I can tell you that Tan is falling back from our leaders right now. Our leaders by the way, our top two drivers are the only drivers lapping in the 21s. They're lapping in the 21 sixes together. Meanwhile, Tan and the rest of the field are in the 22s or higher. And particularly Dylan Tan right now on the 22.5 versus the bollard behind him on the 22.5 as well. But it's the case that these two pushing on and then the, the rest of the drivers behind them all in the 23s. And I do think our top four may have loaded their cars a little bit lighter on fuel to give them the opportunity to jump the field in terms of the pit window, but we'll have to wait and find out. Remember, our drivers are allowed to pit whenever they want in this race. There is no defined pit window where they have to pit, but it is the case when we talk about a pit window here, it's about coming out into clear air and not in amongst the traffic, because remember track position here is so critical, and we've already seen that with Sheriff Pinion being caught up behind what was the driver of Courage as they made their way around, and that costs time if you have to try and force your way through another drive we saw that at Bathurst we're seeing it again here today at Laguna Seca right now albeit we haven't seen all the strategies play out so far we're nowhere near that of course but that is a big factor that'll be on the minds of all of our drivers as they make their way across the timing line once again and our race leader that time around a 21.8 a 21.5 George Booby Dylan Tan a 22.3 as a ball of a 22.6 our top four lapping quickly but Dow King now starting to move into the 22s as well and the Jota McLaren driver here trying to get a bit closer as meanwhile we look a little bit further down the field and we can see speaking of getting close so we'll Tinker van der Velde finds himself in between a Porsche and Bentley sandwich as they make their way through the right hander here. Turn at number three, and van der Velde right now just trying to maintain that pace. I think he's had a good start to this race, it hasn't worked out perfectly. But he's gained in terms of where he is now, and as they make their way through turn number four, is the case he's close enough to Marcus Fox. Now, what can Fox do in this situation, of course, as he will see Vanderbilt pressing on behind him? Well, I think for Fox, he's not going to worry too much about that pressure that's building on him, as we see, and we ride on board here with the Austrian from Fox Sim Racing as he makes his way through turn six and up towards seven, eight. But I think what he will be targeting, as we see there, it looks as though we've got the Bentley driver going for a move, and indeed, Vacker all over the back of Vanderbilt as they make their way into the braking zone here. And the Team Ballers eSport driver, well, as he cuts a little bit of the apex there of turn eight, a the second part of the turn eight course screw chicane as he makes his wound down i think vaca here is a very very potent driver in terms of how he feels and you can see the mad max number plate on the rear of the car there and indeed whether that is his name uh, his real name max we'll have to wait and see as well it's matia vaca in fact as he makes his way through the left hander there and as the palace driver comes charging out to turn number 11 and down towards another lap going on to lap number 11 he is looking 
very strong right now behind Vanderbilt and putting that pressure on time and time again. But of course, it could be the case that right now Vanderbilt preserving the car. Perhaps he's back in the pace off, running to predefined lap time. We will have to wait and see as we jump on board here with our driver in P10. And he's at the bottom of the top 10 right now, but by no means is he out of the pace of the top 10 as he comes out to turn number three. Gets a little bit sideways there, having to fight the car. It's the case. Bentley not wanting to turn through the corner instead of having to force it on the steering wheel. And he's lost out a couple of attempts there on the exit of three as they made the way through four. And this is not what he would have wanted. But again, he could have over pushed the car there in the pursuit of Tinker van der Velde and has now needed his back off. We've seen a little bit of slip there as he made his way into turn number five. But of course, the Laguna Seca circuit not offering anywhere near as much grip as other circuits on the calendar. And as a result, this track, a very tricky one to find that natural grip on the road surface. You really need to set up the car to get the most out of it in terms of going through each and every corner and responding to the fact there's just not as much grip on the tarmac as you would perhaps expect as they make their way through eight and into nine. Now, as they come down through the left hand, you can see Fox really struggling in the second half of the lap here and causing the three drives to bunch up together once again. It seems though Fox has the better run on the opening half of the lap until he turns one through to five. But as soon as they go beyond turn six, that's where Van der Velde really closes up. And you can see that when Van der Velde gets close, Vaca also moves up here. And it's particularly in these last couple of corners where Vaca really excels in bringing that bend into the order but as they go on to another lap onto lap number 12 now it's the case you can see all three start to separate out but back of very close this time he's got to look for the move and as they go into the braking zone for Austin it is the case no way through but he's right there and this is uncomfortable for Tinker van der Velde because you can imagine right now in his mind as we hear that Kevin Gellin into the pits from P20 he's decided to make his opening pit stop for where's van der Velde right now he's got to make a decision does he force the move to take VA or does he have to start committing to the defense of P9 and Vaca in return will want want Van der Velde to just simply give him the place. He'll think about it, but I don't think Tinker Van der Velde wants to yield him because once he's tucked in behind that Bentley, I think it's going to be some time before he finds a way past it and on track. It'll probably be the strategy as they make their way up towards turn at number six. Once again, you can see Van der Velde constantly pulling out of the air there to try and signal or try and distract Fox and also get some of the temperature of the tyres on the front of the car as they make their way into the braking zone for Corkscrew once again here. And this is where Vaca closes up as they make their way downhill for the, another time and as they make their way around here we look to the exterior cameras and whilst this is happening I can tell you that our race leader is gradually being reeled in now by George Booby the gap has come down to one second whilst we've been focusing on the battle here for P8 as they all make their way on through and it's the case our leaders are right now Erbin and flying and Tan and Zabolov as well in the battle for P3 only separated by seven tenths of a second as meanwhile we look from our battle for P8 here to a bit further down our order we look down to the battle for P3 13 and we look at Pavel Pushkrev here in the Armantel red Ferrari as he tries to gain an advantage on Christian Nambrini as they make the way out of the final corner here onto another lap but of course the Aston Martin ahead of Pushkrev no slouch when it comes to straight line acceleration and it will be the case that the Russian is very aware of that he's got to get it done through the corners that's where he's going to close up if anywhere as they make the way down through the Austin hairpin once again behind them you can see Chris Zoyga starting to pull away from Haritojo the Cosmos racing team driver here does have for Leapy all over his back right now as they make their way up through turn number three once again and as they come through the right hander it does look as though I think we might have had a little bit of a moment from a driver just up the road from us and I think Pushkrev just going a little bit wide they're coming out of three and the car getting unsettled because that gap between himself and Nimbrini has now opened up quite considerably there it's opened up to the best part of just over a second as they make their way around and meanwhile a bit further down the order in P20 right now Mikel Rattel here another Cosmos racing team driver here making his way out of turn at number five and chasing after Pantera there as they make the way up towards turn number six and as they come into left hander here both drivers will not want to impinge upon one another both Ferrari drivers both racing for the same team they will be wary of it they need to target Evan straight of course our P18 driver who's making his way into the corkscrew right now and as he comes on through here you can see how the two Ferraris bunch up behind the McLaren driver and Evan Straight just trying to keep his cool right now and not let the pressure from Pantera and Rattel behind him cause him any mistakes as he makes his way into turn at number 10 once again here and as he makes his way around right now with that pressure building what do you do at this point if you're in Evanstate? Well, you just got to try and find a way to maintain your pace. Go a little bit defensive. Needs being don't make mistakes. But I say that he has made a mistake on the exit of 11. He's gone a bit deep. And it's an opportunity here for Pantera. He's on the inside. I think the Ferrari driver will have the run into of two. And as they come down to the braking zone for the hairpin, it's the case that you've got a face full of Ferrari on the inside here. And Evanstate cannot turn the steering wheel any more than that without causing contact. And as they make the way out of the hairpin, it is now Pantera up to P18. Evanstate drops the position about 
and meanwhile whilst that's gained you can see Mikel Rattel behind just waiting for that opportunity here as they make their way through turn number four and we're hearing Benjamin Asili is in to the pits alongside Nesta Magia as well as they all make their way on through our drives continue to press round here and as they come into that breaking zone for turn number five no change this time for Rattel as he looks on trying to find a way past the McLaren driver but as we look from them back towards our leaders right now, we can see that Whitehead and Booby separated by only a second. They are trading lap times very much so as we hear that George Booby has set a 22.0 on that last out of 21.6 for Whitehead. Meanwhile, further back, we can see that Dylan Tan here, he has got the ball of closing up behind him. And in fact, the Aston Martin driver all over the back of Tan as they go on to lap number 15. And as we ride on board here with the ball of as he makes his way through turn three, we just listen into the sound of that V8 engine roar as he heads out to turn number four and up towards turn number five. As he comes into that braking zone here, you can see the difference between the two cars with the Ferrari able to take these corners with greater confidence in terms of the line. But as Zabolo himself really trying to punch the ticket here in terms of carrying that speed, but he almost gets it wrong there at six. You can see that the car just wanted to straight line when he tried to turn it through the corner, and that was a near major error for him. But he kept it together in him, but Zabolo really on the limit right now of what the Aston Martin can do. He wants that P3. He does not want to be stuck behind Tam right now. He feels he's got the pace to get past but the Ferrari driver doing a very good job of just keeping it consistent right now and that's the thing for Zabolov he's got to have such a pace advantage indeed for anybody in trying to overtake you've got to have such a pace advantage to get the move done here at Laguna Seca and as he makes it throughout the final corner it's the case still tucked in behind Tan as they go on to lap number 16 but I do wonder how long it's going to be before we may see Zabolov get close enough to consider going for a lunge into say the braking zone here for the hairpin alternatively into the court screw chicane well he's going to have to wait for the time in as they make their way around through the hairpin once again here and we look to the exterior cameras as there's no change between the two of them at this point in time but we are hearing that Dennis DeMarco into the pit and Vacker as a result now going for the move here on what is well with my apologies that's not a move on a driver I don't think it's the case that's why the Cosmos Racing Team Machines are moving out of the way Cormac Ryan Meenan tucking in behind here as well so it's the case that Ryan Meenan following through with Vacker and Van der Waal start behind Fox still and Ryan Meenan gaining massively here as they make the way on through and that is one of our back markers there who's had to move out the way and I do believe um, unless I'm very much mistaken that's not Alexei Yujigov here who's making his way and has just found his way ahead of well I say he's found his way ahead as he makes his way on through but that's an Aston Martin behind him and that is Emil Blaine in fact trying to find a way past the Russian as they make the way down into the hairpin once again here but we look back from the battle for P28 all the way up to the battle for P7 Marcus Fox of course being promoted to P7 the drivers behind him as well as we did see a DeMarco coming into the pit and indeed some of these early pit stops now starting to play out here but you can see how Cormac Ryan mean and tucked in at the back of this quad this quadruple group of cars here as we can see that Marcus Fox just trying to hold on to that P7 right now and to be fair to Marcus Fox he's been putting in good laps as Vesfield's last lap was a disaster of a lap by comparison for Marcus Fox a 23.3 Vesfield a 25.6 I think Vesfield made a mistake somewhere alternatively found traffic in an inconvenient place on the circuit which you can see the P6 driver from Team ITR falling backwards towards these guys as they make their way into the Austin hairpin once again here now what can Fox do because remember whilst he's in a nice place at the moment he has quite quote got clear air in front of him he's not close enough to feel the dirty air off the back of the Porsche driver ahead of him. When he gets close enough, he will feel the same issue that he is presenting to Tinker van der Velde, to Vaca, and also to Ryan Meenan behind, and that is where Fox could become vulnerable, because if he loses that front end downforce, and he's not ready to react to it, that car is not going to feel comfortable when he takes it through the corners anymore, and as they may their way through the left hand here going through turn number five just carrying on as they go up the hill and into turn number six as they come charging on through right now it is the case that we can see Tico van der Velde just tucked in behind in P8 as it currently stands and not able to find his way on through and he is staying close we can see Vesfield definitely falling backwards here but Field will have a strategy in mind here perhaps he's pushed the car a little bit too hard but he will have a strategy in mind it may be an unconventional one but he will make it work as we look from the battle for what is really P6 now as it's building up to to the battle for P3 once again you can see Zabolov here trying to close up to Tam but the gap's still half a second here Zabolov just 
not able to find the X out of the corners to get the engine, that V8 engine to flourish of the Aston Martin as he makes his way on through. As we look into the chat right now and we can see Harry Spears saying, great, Luke, great stuff by Luke so far and I must apologise Harry in the YouTube chat because when I said about the Mercedes driver at Suzuka who took the fight to George Bouvi, I believe you were the Mercedes driver. I had a mental blank with regards to your name but I hope you're doing well Mr Spears. As we can see here, George Bouvi now starting to build the pressure on to Whitehead here and meanwhile I can see Rafael Santa Barbara there saying what a start to this race indeed a brilliant start and hopefully it means to go on this way in very high caliber intense race and action as we can see that Whitehead right now holding off Boofy but for how long before Boofy gets close enough to consider making that move or is it the case that he gets close enough but he decides not to push any further and instead just decides to stay there and become a bit of a nuisance he could potentially do some fuel saving for example if he feels as though he's got enough pace and he'll be able to jump it on strategy we will have to wait and see but the Yassi driver right now I think really coming into an operating window and Whitehead whilst he's holding on after 25 minutes of racing how much of this is controlled strategy versus the two of them going outright pace it's not to take anything away from Whitehead or Boothby but again they both got aces up their sleeve they both got cards to play who is holding the better set of cards in their hand we will only be able to tell as time goes on as meanwhile in that battle for P3 still we can see Zavolov cutting into the rear behind Tan as they make their way through they've got a bit of traffic ahead and that is Kevin Gellin up ahead and here's of course a lap down after that pit stop which has seen him drop down the order to P24 but that's how long it takes to complete a pit stop here and of course a number of tries as a result find themselves out of position and really our leaders now siphoning through the drives who had to make that early pit stop and we can see that Tan really getting that pressure behind him as they make the way into five once again now as they come through the left hand here and head up towards turn number six and we can see a Luca Dagano there in the YouTube chat saying Forza Christian and indeed cheering on I believe a Christian Nembrini who's in P12 at this point in time who we will take a look to in a minute we can see that Tan under that pressure now now will Zabolov look for the move here into the court screw well I think if he's going to go for it he's going to have to go for it very late in the day he's very close here's Zabolov as they come roaring down the hill here we ride on board looking back for some Dylan Tan's Ferrari and as they come through turn number nine right now you can see what's the all of he's trying to do he's trying to put so much pressure on Tan to get Tan to miss a breaking point and he's practically he needs to be this close because right now if he can be as close as what he was into corkscrew when he comes out of this corner you can see look at the lines of all trying to take he's trying to take such an aggressive line there to carry the speed through the corner and it's working but it's just not enough right now he's got the gap down come going on to lap number 20 to what is now four tenths of a second as they come into that breaking zone once again you can see it's Tan who's got a little bit deep then he just breaks Brings the car back together just about. But Zabolov really putting that pressure on right now. And I can't imagine what's going through the mind of the Singaporean. As you can see a flash of the lights there from Zabolov. He is trying to throw every card in the book at what is Tan in order to distract him. And put that pressure on as they make their way through four and in towards five here. And as they come down towards the braking zone up towards turn number five. No attempt this time. But they're getting closer and closer as they come all the way through the left hand of five once again. Now at this point, with the traffic ahead of him, of course, is Tan losing some front-end downforce. That's one of the things he will have on his mind. Well, I don't think so right now, as we are hearing that Tinker Vanderbilt has passed Marcus Fox for P7 off camera. But meanwhile, with Tan and Zabolov this close, and for Zabolov right now, this is a huge, huge opportunity. It's a huge opportunity for the pair of them to really move their championship campaigns up a gear. And as they make the way into turn number nine, you see the blue flags are out for Gellin. He is about one second up the road from this, and I think he's trying to maintain enough pace not to have to give the position away because he will not want to be tucked behind this battle should it kick off at full intensity and as they make the way through you can see Zabolov goes deep there into the hairpin and I think that's going to breathe a little bit of life back into Tan's positional grip on P3 right now Zabolov just going a bit deep under braking you could see he wanted to go as late as possible to literally hunk the back of that Ferrari but this time it's not worked out instead he's now fallen to a second back and he'll have to build up that charge once again after 28 minutes of racing at Laguna Seca but meanwhile we are hearing that Matisse of Vaca, the Bullers Esport Bentley is into the pits from P10 and as he makes his way in right now this could prove to be a rather clinical pit stop he hasn't been able to find his way past some of the other drivers around him we see Andres Mason now in P9 making his way on through here the distinct GG driver having a bit of a difficult start but now regaining but really the big consideration here with regards to what is Vaca. he's trying to undercut I reckon Tinker van der Velde in fact van der Velde has dropped back behind Marcus Fox so these two have traded places I'm wondering where van der Velde had to give up the position as we are just checking in with the stewards at this point in time and well it does look as though in terms of 
uh, what is penalties and things on those lines. Some penalties have been given out, but we haven't seen them appearing on our timing chart right now, ladies and gentlemen, which is a little bit of unfortunate. That might be a little bit of a technical glitch with our timing sheets, but I can tell you in terms of penalties that have been applied so far, well, we have had a number of them here. It is the case we have had a five-second time penalty for what is... A car number 16 and can't well in fact they're starting to appear right now as we see a stop and go penalty of 30 seconds for back in fact these penalties are just coming in now ladies and gentlemen my apologies we do have a stop and go penalty of 30 seconds for the and that's for speeding in the pit lane goodness me vaca there with an error in the pit lane he's just not got the pit limiter on at the right time and as a result the team ball esports drive that is going to completely destroy what was a potential opportunity for a fantastic finish well inside the top 10 back again it wrong there in the pits and well he is going to be dreading that one all the way to the finish line there's no doubt about that as he makes his way on through but i can definitely tell you we have got a number of stewarding decisions which are coming your way soon and those should appear in the near future i don't think they've been confirmed as of yet and that's why we haven't seen the penalties on our screen so apologies for the confusion there as meanwhile we look around once again and we can see a whitehead ahead of Boothby. a whitehead having the fastest lap of the race so far at 21.385 that's determined of course by the little purple pink indicator next to his driver number on the left hand side of your screen on the timing board but you can see george Boothby all over the back of whitehead there as Boothby gets very close and now this is not comfortable breathing for whitehead as they make their way across the timeline onto lap 23 they go and as they make their way down towards turn one you can see Boothby trying to squeeze whitehead onto that inside line in return turn white trying to make booby go all the way round as they come through turn number two and as they make the way on through no change this time as we ride on board with george booby as he makes his way into turn number three now you can see the difference in lines as booby tried to go for a deep line there into three but he's rolled it on the brakes and as a result with the car under steering there just not having the grip to make the corner booby has lost out there in the dirty air of whitehead but you can see how both drivers now really having to drive to the limit and particularly Booby here I think he's been trying to save the car up for an opportunity later on remember they've still both got to take two pit stops in this race so how they pit stops play out into the hands of both of these drivers is the question now what do you do in this scenario assuming that we don't know anything about the strategies of these two and assume they're equal strategies does Booby pit first or does Whitehead pit first well if Whitehead pits then it'll be Booby gets the reactors Whitehead goes a bit deep there into the corkscrew and as they make the way out the corner this could be huge as they come down to turn number six there's no way through but Whitehead literally driving on the line here to try and hold on to that lead you can see Booby trying to find every which way around the Titan twisted Laguna Sega circuit they can't towards turn number 11 Whitehead goes defensive Booby looks around the outside he's going to try and cut back here on next you can see Whitehead parks on the apex of the corner as he's legally allowed to to be fair but it's a drag race and that parking didn't quite work or did it as they make the way onto another lap they're side by side in the run down towards turn number two and as they come into the braking zone here whitehead i think seeing george booby get ahead he can't outbreak the britain as they make the way through the hairpin and george booby is into the lead of this race after 32 minutes my goodness you couldn't have asked for it to be any closer between these two now will we see booby make the breakaway or will we see whitehead return and try to take the lead back very shortly or will we see a strategic decision come from Whitehead now because surely he must be thinking now that Booby's into the lead if he can't catch back up then it's the case he's got to do something on strategy and he's got to do it soon because otherwise Booby will try to break away we'll have to wait and find out as that was the battle for the lead and meanwhile we can see Zabolov here has made his way past Dylan Tan off camera but Tan has lost out by comparison with Zabolov as they make the way up towards turn number five and Tan now being caught up by King very gradually as they make the way around on the circuit as we are seeing in the chat right now as we can see so what they're in the YouTube chat saying how on earth are the leaders that fast 20 seconds ahead of P3 well we know the Porsche is very strong around here but there's also other things to consider for example are our leaders running less fuel than the drivers behind them some drivers may have opted to take all the fuel in this race at the start or the majority of their fuel whereas it may be the case the leaders have taken a lot less fuel there's so many things on the strategy we will see how it plays out but I do think that Whitehead and Ruby are in a little bit of a well to their own with regards to their pace here at Laguna Seca circuit we saw that in qualifying where in the end it was Whitehead who took pole by two tenths of a second over for Boothby who was in fact a further two tenths of a second ahead of Tan in P3 as they make their way on through we're hearing that Vac is into the pits for a stop and go 30 second penalty which will be demoralizing to his race and meanwhile as Whitehead follows through right now we look a little bit further back and we can see that it's Marcus Fox 
will now be trying to do what Booby did to another Porsche driver earlier. Well, Fox will need to do it to the Porsche driver of Field, and that is gain the position as they make the way out of turn 11 here because Vez Field right now in P6. He's fallen backwards towards these guys right now, but to be fair, Field's been keeping a consistent pace all the way through the race. High 23s versus Fox on the mid 23s, and then we can see Andres Mesa just behind. Now, where is Tinker van der Veld? I hear you ask. Well, Tinker van der Veld has made a pit stop. He's come out in P13, and look who's behind him. That's Harry Phillips. Now, for those who are not aware, Harry Phillips decided to pit quite early on as we see Sul Pantera into the pits there from P15 and Tingo van der Velde has managed to get himself back out ahead of the Bentley of Harry Phillips but Phillips making that initial undercut pit stop work well he has caught up to van der Velde and I think for the Wild Things racing driver now if he can maintain this pace and stay with van der Velde as we see coming out the pits there that's Vaca coming out but he is a lap down in P25 it should be clarified so he will not be able to get involved in this race albeit that he will be in front of these drivers and the blue flags will be waving I assume in due course as they make the way through turn number three and up towards four here it's the case that right now van der Velde and Phillips could be a force to be reckoned with if they can find their way through the traffic meanwhile a bit further back a driver who's had to turn a recovery into this race it is the case that we've got Cherapin in here Daniel Cherapin in the Russian the S&P racing esports driver our championship leader he is still behind Kruic as they make their way through three and up into four he's made one pit stop already after being knocked off circuit at the start of the race we saw the contact between what was Marcus Fox also DeMarco if I remember correctly and Cherapin being the one who got knocked off the circuit and I think the stewards are still working on deciphering that one but we can see it's the case that Daniel Sherapin right now chasing after Courage as they make the way all the way up towards turn number six here and meanwhile coming into the pits is Andres Mesa from P8 from what I'm gathering looking out my pit window right now and also in my commentary box window I can see that Mesa's into the pits with Sherapin in here looking for the move on Courage and Krivich not giving any quarter he does not want to let that McLaren throw and I think for the case that Krivich really wants these points right now as they make the way down through turn at number nine once again and remember Krivich is allowed to race here this is a track position this is not a case that the championship leader is caught up behind a driver who's a lap down they are both on the same lap and Jerry Pinion's having to try and make a recovery out of this race as he looks the inside into 11 he's too far back to go for the move there as the McLaren zone 20 just does not seem to have the speed in order to gain an advantage as he makes his way across that timeline it's gone for what for him it's now lap 26 as they make their way across that timing line we look a little bit further up the field once again and we can see it's the case that Harry Phillips continues to close up to Tinker van der Velde as they come on through the sequence of corners and as they come charging on through for the time being he's just right there in the slipstream of the McLaren driver as they make their way around keeping that pressure on as much as possible but will he be able to find a way to gain an advantage well I think right now he's gaining every advantage he can by just staying as close as he possibly can as meanwhile a bit further up front in P6 right now and under a lot of pressure is Vesfield with Marcus Fox over the back. And now, to be fair, the rest of the drivers who were behind Marcus Fox have pitted. They've decided to undercut Marcus Fox. But how will it play out? Remember, we do know that Vesfield and Marcus Fox will take unconventional strategies. They think it will work. And right now, I think that these two may be targeting going as deep as possible on that opening stint. Now, in terms of a prediction of how deep they would go on that opening stint, I would say they could be looking up to 60 minutes of the 90-minute race here on the first first stint and then it'll be the case the second stint is about 25 minutes long leaving them with a very light car at the end of the race but we'll have to wait and see of course as they make the way around the circuit and as they come roaring on through the corners once more here it is the case as they come charging up the hill towards turn at number six and no change between these drives for the time being but it is the case of Esfield under that pressure that growing pressure from Fox and I think Fox right now is in two minds of whether he looks for the move or not as they make the way into the corkscrew here and he doesn't go for it this time he's too far back but definitely continue to mount that pressure as they make the way down into turn number nine as we see Raymond Mooney there in the YouTube chat saying it's Porsche things with regards to the speed of the leaders and indeed a very fast Porsche here around Laguna Seca one of the strongest cars particularly with the 2019 BOP but as they make the way down into the braking zone here for the hairpin you can see Fox trying to make his move around the outside here he's not able to his field extends the width of the corner for himself making sure Fox can't commit to that full outside line and as they make the way down towards turns one and two here it's the case that the Swiss holding on for the time being as they make the way down into the braking zone for the Austin hairpin. Now, will Fox send it late? He looks for it. He does consider it, but he's not close enough. But Phil does go deep, and Fox, in fact, sees an opportunity, but he clips the sausage curve there on the second apex of turn two. And as a result, he loses a little bit of momentum. And as the camera pans round right now, it is the case that Field holds on for the time being, but Fox very close as he continues to press on. We ride on board with the Austrian here in this battle for P6. 
one of our closest battles in the circuit right now. And remember, this is the battle for P6 out on track. But in terms of the battle for position in strategy, well, we'll have to wait and see. But Field, they're very, very hesitant to get on the power coming out to five. And I think Fox at this point now really pulling the gloves off and saying, right, I've got to get this done because I'm losing so much time. And indeed, indeed these drivers lapping in the high 24s as it currently stands compared to their peers. And as they make their way into the court screen, Fox looking to try and go for the cut back under braking. He does attempt it, but Field puts the car right there on the natural line from the middle of the court screen. There's no way through for the Austrian right now. But as they come on through turn number nine, the Swiss there having to take such defensive lines and park the car every corner. And what it means is he is losing that ability to carry speed. And now Fox will look again as fields into the pits. And I think for Fox, the damage may have been done, not in terms of damage to the car, but definitely damage to that portion of his race right now as Field has played this one, I think, to his perfection in his eyes in terms of just how long he's been out there and how much time he's had on the circuit as we are coming to the end of the opening 40 minutes. And it's the case of Field in from P6. Now, where will our drivers come out as we see Luca Felipe, who's yet to appear here, the Waller Racing driver staying out and making his way through the hairpin here at turn number 11 and in towards turn number one. He goes, he charges across that time and I'm very shortly and there is Tingo van der Velde here so this is where Tingo van der Velde and also Harry Phillips are going to gain considerably as we hear that Chris Zoiger into the pits as well I think Zoiger and Phil both trying to use a similar strategy here and as they make the way down van der Velde and also Harry Phillips they press on for the time being and these two still as they were only separated by the best part of three to five attempts over the course in each and every lap and we do know that Bentley quite strong in those acceleration zones and good in the traction zones where it's the case that the McLaren typically strong in the sweeper corner such as turn four here this is where it will gain quite nicely but it does look as though Phillips maintaining the pace of Van der Velde right now and just simply using him as a pace car in terms he's not going to try and overtake Van der Velde he's going to use him to match lap times and indeed that's something you can do and as I said earlier if you're looking for one driver who is going to be focused on lap time and making sure he drives a particular face, uh, pace you are looking at him right now and that is Harry Phillips because that is how he grinds out results in races that are not going his way and right now I reckon we could be seeing him jump right back up into the top 10 when all the strategy is said and done but again we will have to wait and see but meanwhile, we look from our battle to, for P10, as it currently stands, as we hear that Dylan Tan into the pits, and Tan parked up right now. They're working on the car. Now, this releases Marcus Fox even further up the order into P5. How long will Fox go? Indeed, how long will a good number of our leaders go? Because Dow King, who we haven't spoken about too much recently, the Joe to McLaren driver here in P4, and indeed, he's running quite a long opening stint here, and that McLaren looking sharp as he makes his way up the hill here towards turn number eight, up towards the corkscrew, and then we look a bit Further up, and we see Oleg Zabolov after taking the place off of Dylan Tan, the SP Racing Esport driver here, 23 seconds off of our leaders as he makes his way through. In fact, that's gone up to 24 seconds by the time he completes this lap by the looks of things based on our lap chart. And as he makes his way on down right now, it is the case of Zabolov feeling very confident, I think, with that final podium position. But will that confidence come back to haunt him? That's the question. As meanwhile, our leaders, well, they are already almost halfway round the what is for them their 31st lap. As we see Luke Whitehead here in P2, having been by this man, George Boothby, our leader at this point in time, and he's gradually opening up the gap between the two of them, with George Boothby now lapping in and out of the high 21s into low 22s, whereas Whitehead seems to be lapping in the low 22s to mid 22s. I think Boothby is now unleashing the pace. He waited for an opportunity, and now he is starting to unleash it now that he has got that lead position. But he's had to wait a good amount of time to get it done, to be fair. But at the same time, I think Boothby has been planning something from the start, and it's now materialising. But as we look from him down to what is P8 right now, we look at Luca Felipe, who's chasing after to Haratojo here and these two of course yet to make pit stops we can see behind them we have got the driver there always think of Vanderbilt and that's Harry Phillips into the pits again now I well I'd say that Harry Phillips coming in this early and I will check my briefing notes here as I'll try to make the way on a round right now but Harry Phillips well he has decided to come in now with that in mind is Phillips going to go long on that final stint because if this is a scheduled stop that is going to open up his race very differently from everyone else around him he will be our first driver within the top 20 to have made both stops and well Phillips I think could be one of our drivers to come charge on through now if we if in terms of if you're asking me have we seen this before we have seen this happen before in fact one of our drivers who's watching right now because he wasn't able to race tonight and that is the driver the Porsche driver always Raymond Mooney we saw Mooney at what was Kyle Army decide to get his two pit stops out the way before anybody else in the top 20 by a 
huge, huge margin of what was 20 minutes. And over the course of that 20 minute delta, he managed to essentially undercut 10 places in the field to go from P20 into the top 10. And then over the rest of the race, he managed to pick up even more by simply having that pace come the end. I think he finished at Kyle Army P8 or P7, unless I'm very much mistaken. And I think that's what Phillips is doing. I think he's taking some inspiration from what Mooney did earlier on in the season and deciding, you know what, I'm going to try and undercut everybody as much as I can. As we see Luca Felipe there getting it wrong through the corner. And that's George Bruby coming on through. Well, Felipe having to obey those blue flags and doing so in a rather literal manner, which is I'm going to get completely off the circuit. But as we see George Bruby into the pits right now, our race leader comes in, but he does have a car with him. And that is the 404 car there. And they both made contact. And well, I think Booby into his hitbox. Meanwhile, the 404 car, and I think that could be something that the stewards are going to take a look at. And that's the 404 car of what is, I don't have the number, that's Haritojo. But meanwhile, with that, and that is not going to do Booby any favors, it is Whitehead, meanwhile, who is now leading this race. And with that one instant, could that completely upset the Apple car? Well, I do wonder. As meanwhile, as we see it, Whitehead making his way around, he does have some traffic ahead of him. And I believe that is one of the SMP Esport Aston Martins as they come on through the corner. It is the case as he comes charging up through there. And we do see the driver moving out the way behind Felipe. And that's the ball of moving out the way. Oleg Zabolov here who has made one pit stop. And to give you an idea, ladies and gentlemen, Zabolov, when he pitted, was P3 in this race. Our leader has just lapped in. That is how rapid Whitehead and Boothby have been lapping around the circuit runner. Remember, Zabolov has made that pit stop, of course, so that has cost him time out on circuit, whereas Whitehead has yet to pit. But that is the speed which Whitehead and Boothby have been pushing on their opening stints. As we see there, Felipe literally trying to move out the way on the court screw. Well, a bit of a dangerous way to do it, but he's got it done all the same. And credit to him for doing so in a controlled manner like that. I wouldn't have done it like that personally, but still, each to their own. And as we reach the halfway point of this race, we can see Zabolov here holding on to that P8 for the time being. As we see coming into the pits is Whitehead and a stop and go 30 second penalty for Haratojo for speeding in the pit lane but I do wonder how much that was influenced with the contact with Boothby coming into the pits there as Whitehead into the pits now now where is George Boothby in all of this where well, he came out in P4 and he's making his way right now through turn number five and heading up towards six whereas Whitehead is in the pit lane this time now will we see Whitehead come out ahead as meanwhile will one driver who's continued to make his way around the circuit is Dow King and well he's made his way out to turn 10 and now up into 11 but this is how far back the rest of the field is compared to our leaders as Dow King only now will go on very shortly to take the lead of this race he goes on to take the lead he will lead the lap of this race and as he makes his way across the timing line it is the case we look back to Marcus Fox here who's in P3 and he's all the way down at the 10th corner of the circuit right now but meanwhile we can see Booby there in the rear of the picture as he's making his way into turn 11 now as he comes through the left hand here what about Whitehead is he still up on the jacks He's just leaving the pit lane now. This is going to be close as he emerges here. Where's Boothby? He's making his way across the timeline. They'll both be in the camera shot very shortly as, in fact, we look to the helicam here and you'll get an idea. As you can see, Whitehead on the left-hand side of your screen obscured by the timing board. It is going to be neck and neck as they come out of the hairpin, but Whitehead is just ahead by a sliver of a margin here and it is the contact between Boothby and what was at the time Haritojo in the pits which has completely changed this once again. Whitehead is now back into what we suspect is the lead this race when Dow King pits from the positional lead right now but Whitehead is in the lead on strategy at this point in time as the two Porsche drivers now will have to go toe to toe once again particularly Boothby will want to get back ahead as soon as possible now in this situation the big question will be of course how long Will it take Whitehead to get himself back up to pace? Because Booby's already done a lap on his tyres. And as a result, he'll have the temperature. You can see Booby on the offensive here. As they come down the rubble, straight and up towards turn number eight. Into the chicane they go. No way this time. As they come out of the corkscrew and head down towards nine. But Booby looking for the move here. And he switches it back to the outside at the last possible moment here. Forcing Whitehead onto that inside line. Whitehead squirming left and right to defend. As we've got a bit of dust being kicked up off the circuit. And as they make their way through, we can see Harry Phillips there. And one of our other back markers as they make their way into the break zone and it's the case that Whitehead holds that inside as the 489 car moves out the way that's Pantera there who's a lap down and as they make the way across that timeline to go on to lap number 36 Boothby all over the back of Whitehead as they come charging down he's forcing Whitehead to that timeline they cut the pit lane as much as they possibly can here and surely if they cut it any more than that there's going to be a few track limits warnings and then some as we can see Booby literally mounting pressure left 
right and centre after Whitehead as they make their way through turn at number three. We ride on board with the second of our two Porsche drivers here in this battle. And as they come through turn number four, once again, the Yas Heat driver here literally giving no quarter. I can sense he is furious right now at the fact he's come out behind Whitehead. And for his strategy, he needs to find a way back ahead as soon as possible. Because Whitehead's able to get those tyres up to temperature, which it looks like they are now starting to come into their operating window once again. It could be the case that it all comes down to the second pit stop rather than a move out and circuit. As you can see, Booby dropping back a little bit there, coming through turn number six. Perhaps he needs a moment to cool down. Perhaps a moment to think about how he's going to rework the strategy. We'll wait and see as they come into that braking zone. But two very different approaches to the braking there. You can see Whitehead taking a much more gentle approach. Booby more aggressive on the braking. But as they both emerge from the corner, no time change as they make the way now down into turn at number 10. Bouncing over the rough and ragged circuit. Laguna Seca, the bumpy tarmac as they make the way up towards turn 11 to complete their current lap. And as they come on into the braking zone, meanwhile, further up the road, of course, Dow King still leading this race. As we see Harry Phillips there moving off of the racing line. I believe he'll let both of these guys through as they come off into what is another lap. You can see Phillips there staying as far left as possible, aware of the fact he's getting the double blue flag through. And as they make the way in towards turn at number two, the Austin Hairpin once again, Whitehead and Booby literally as they were, as they make their way around the circuit once more. Meanwhile, Christian Nembrini, who we talked about a little bit earlier, the Cortex racing driver, where he has yet to appear, but he finds himself in a rather pleasant position which is p4 right now now of course some of you may be asking why go so long when you're quite far back in the field and gain so many places well here's the thing what Nembrini is priding himself on is that he doesn't make a single mistake over the course of this opening stint, whereas all the drivers who he was battling with, when they pitted earlier than him, he will be hoping they get held up behind traffic, they take longer in the pits than they should have, they make a mistake out on circuit and trying to push to essentially undercut him. So right now, Nembrini going this long, and the fact that he's been maintaining space, he's been constantly in the high, what is the high 23s to low 24s, this could work out very well for Nembrini. He was battling for a low point in the top 20, could we see the Italian here really jump his way up into the top portion of that hunt for the top 10? We will have to wait and see as he makes his way through turn at number 6. But meanwhile, a bit further back, we're talking about undercuts and strategies here. Zabolov, after his pit stop, has come out behind Tinko Vanderveld and Vanderveld now putting that pressure to pay. But meanwhile, now Zabolov is going to be the one putting the pressure on him as Vanderveld has made that undercut work. But will it work as we're hearing that Dow King now into the pits on the race lead? So that releases Whitehead back into the lead of the race in terms of position and strategy but Sabolov continues to put that pressure on the McLaren driver ahead of him as they make their way through turn at number 10 and then Brini shows no signs of coming in at this point but Sabolov does look for the movers behind there's Dylan Tan and Tan despite the fact that he fell back off Sabolov is closing back up again as he makes his way through turn at number 11 but we look from him back to Sabolov once again and we can see Sabolov having the better run out of the final corner in the drag race down towards turn 2 and I think it's the case that Tinker Vanderbilt just simply backing off as we're hearing it's a drive through penalty for Benjamin Aselli so some more penalties are coming in the number 488 driver this time and as they make the way through Zabolov gains the position and it is the case that Vanderveld drops down to P6 and I don't think he went to fight that one too hard because he's conscious of the next pit stop but we will wait and see whether that is proven later on in the race but we look from up in towards our top 10 to down towards the bottom of our top 20 and we see Rene Eferstedt here keeping the pressure on Cyril Pantera both of these drivers haven't made one pit stop but Eferstedt looking quite fast here in the run up towards turn 5 but not close enough to go for the move on the inside and instead he has to wait for another opportunity now i'm going to check with regards to that penalty for the number 488 car which is of course a benjamin city where that drive through penalty has got anything listed against it as he's now going to have to make a third visit to the pits which is not what he would have wanted after clearing his two what was his two mandatory pit stops and we're not seeing anything come through on our screen right now i'm just going to continue to look at that whilst also keeping an eye on air state who's not able to find the move at this time and instead has to back off but meanwhile as we look from them back towards the battle for the lead we can see the gap between our leaders only six tenths of a second right now as they make the way in to turn at number four here and George Booby continues to keep that pressure on but I think the two Britons here have got a very different approach. I think Whitehead is having to really gun and run with this race in order to hold on to that lead. Whereas Boofy, I think right now, is trying to mount little increments of pressure. He put a lot of pressure on when they came out of the pits and he found that he was behind Whitehead. But now he's backed it off a bit. I think he's going to let Whitehead feel as though things are calming down. And then Boofy is going to go on the offensive hard again and essentially putting him through these cycles of pressure, which is so uncomfortable for you as a driver when you've got that pressure that's constantly going to go through a cycle. Now, why is that? 
that? Why is it perhaps a bit harder than having constant pressure behind you? Well, if you've got constant pressure, you'll know in your mind that you have to defend every corner. You'll know that your opponent behind you is looking for that move. So as a result, you're always on edge, but it's a natural part of every lap. Whereas right now, I think Whitehead will be thinking, OK, well, the gap between myself and Booby's now come down to half a second. Is it going to be less than that when I come across the timing line? And if so, do I now have to go defensive onto this lap? And that's the uncertainty of that pressure as they go on. And we can see Booby, in fact, dropping back to seven tenths of a second come the end of lap 38 as they make their way on through but meanwhile looking from drivers making their way on through the corners excuse me it's the case that Nembrini's staying out there was a ball of found a way through in the run up towards the corkscrew she came from what I'm hearing but Tinker van der Velde, meanwhile is caught up behind him as they make the way up towards turn at number 11 and the quartet racing driver here just carrying on his merry way of course not in the race for these guys we're hearing Dylan Tan into the pits for his second and final stop but you can see Tinker van der Velde they're giving a little flash of lights and I think Nembrini to be fair is not going to fight this one too much I think he knows he's not in the race with these guys but he's just simply up there right now but you can see that Aston Martin so strong on the straights here and as a result Vanderbilt not able to find a way in front as we see Krivich there in P16 trying to get in on this now of course Krivich has made both his pit stops here he is a lap down on these guys as we see Vanderbilt looking for that cutback and Vanderbilt I think getting a bit frustrated here that he can't find a way past Nembrini but Nembrini to be fair allowed to do this it's not so he has to give the position up instead just opting to soldier on and take his natural race in line and where Vanderbilt can't overspeed past him here it could be the case that the Dutchman will see his race heavily impacted as meanwhile speaking of impact Impacted races. Well, Tan right now as he comes out of the pit, comes out behind Marcus Fox. Now, of course, Fox has yet to make his second pit stop, but will the Singaporean get a clean run past the Austrian, or will the Austrian put what is the Singaporean in a similar situation to what Nimbrini is putting Van der Velde through right now? We will have to wait and see with 35 minutes still to go. And as they make their way around the circuit right now, a lot of pit stops still to come. But in terms of drivers who've already made both of their stops, our highest place driver right now is Dylan Tan. And where's Dow King? Well, Dow King is a bit further back. And remember when all the pit stops started it was the case that King was behind Tan by the region of what was about 7 to 8 seconds so the Jota McLaren driver right now about in the same position in fact he's gained a second over the proceedings of the pit stops but now he's got to try and close up on circuit that'll be the big change but you can see Vesfield here keeping the Jota McLaren driver honest albeit Vesfield has yet to take his second stop I don't think the ITR driver is going to be too phased by that as they make their way around through the corners once again and it is the case that right now Vesfield continuing to mount that all important pressure as they come through turn at number 10 and fulfilled what he will be hoping he can do is just simply stay as close as possible to that McLaren but in the end he does pull into the pits he's decided enough's enough he is taking that second and final stop a window has opened and he's been called in by the, the crew chief as meanwhile Harry Phillips here our third driver to have made both of his pit stops in terms of our pecking order right now well Harry Phillips doing everything he can to really gain now how will this play out for the World Things race driver remember before the pit stops occurred he was just outside of the top 10 and when the pit stop started to play out he found himself dropping down the order but right now I think he's going to drop he's going to jump this field most certainly how far up the field will he come well, I think he's going to be well inside the top 10 once the pit window is all said and done but we will have to wait and see and speaking about waiting or seeing well we've been waiting to see whether George Booby would re-mount that pressure on Whitehead and it does look as though these two right now separated by half a second once again now will George Booby look for the move or will it be the case he's trying something different is he trying to undercut strategy well he won't be undercutting if he makes mistakes like that going through turn number four but he's run the two left hand wheels beyond the exit curb and put them on to the dust now of course it's not going to do too much damage to the tyres themselves because he's able to straight line the car out but it will cost him a little bit of time as our drivers make the way on through and as they come charging up the hill once again they do have Nesta Magia ahead of them Nesta Magia being in what is P26 right now and the last of our runners out and circuit we have had the best part of what is eight retirements in this race we have lost Cormac Ryan Meenan Sanjin Plesic we've also lost Giovanni Izzo Mattia Savalone Dennis Marco, uh, Killian Ryan Meenan and Leo Boulet sorry not eight retirements seven retirements in fact and as I try to make their way around right now the Laguna Seca circuit not taking any prisoners as you see Nesta Magia there moving out of the way to let our leaders carry on racing but speaking about the leaders we look a little bit further down our lead group right now and we can see that Christian Nembrini has now been passed by Tinko van der Velde. Van der Velde continuing on his way and Nembrini still yet to appear. And well, I would say that right now Nembrini and Pushkrev are both pushing things to the limits. 
and you can see Krivich there all over the back and then Brady and this will be frustrating for Krivich in the fact that he's in P16 and he will know that he is faster than the Cortec racing machine ahead of him but the problem is because he's a lap down if he passes he'll then get the blue flag warnings if he's not able to break away and that is an absolutely horrible situation because this is really biting into his strategy right now you can see how heavily he's clustered up behind them Brady I think he's going to have to force a move and then try and make the break and give himself a lap to make that break and if not tuck back in behind because this is not comfortable for him right now as they make their way down towards what is turn number two once again into heavy braking zone you can see Krivich looking for the move on the inside here he's going to unlap himself and then Brady obliging here just leaving him the space I think it's the right thing to do as we see that Pavel Pushkrev into the pits for his first pit stop here so then Brady will go on to be our longest opening stinter as Pushkrev is now getting his first stop out of the way but meanwhile we look back towards our very top of the pack our two leaders right now of Whitehead and Boothby no change between them for this time as they make their way through turn at number 11 once again here. The field has spread out to a degree now as all those pit stops have been playing out and we're waiting to see how they all come back together. But speaking of drivers who are well trying to figure their way through the pit stop window, we can see that Dylan Tan meanwhile after completing his second stop he came out behind Marcus Fox and he's not been able to find a way past. Now the challenge of course for Tan at this point is with the fact that he is behind Fox right now six tenths of a second and we know the Ferrari and the Porsche quite strong and equal in those handling sections albeit the Porsche having the outright advantage in terms of handling the Ferrari having a little bit more of an advantage on the straight it's the case that right now Tan trying to find a way to gain as he makes his way through six but he's not able to do so here instead has to wait but he will know of course that Fox has got to take another pit stop so he doesn't need to make this move if he doesn't think he's losing time but I think Tan might be on the board right now thinking am I losing too much time here am I not losing time well he will have to figure that one out and of course he will have a delta in mind which as soon as that delta is passed he will feel that he's got to make that move as soon as possible as our drivers come on through once again and meanwhile we check in to the chat here and we can see um, uh, Mikhail Chassini and also Enrico Mario Marinelli there all cheering on what is Christian Nambrini in P5 right now indeed we have got everybody out in support of the Italian Stallion from Cortec Racing and that's great to see in the YouTube chat and we can also see Phoenix in there in the Twitch chat talking about Van der Velde it's good to see you Phoenix in, as always and it is the case nice to see Cinco Van der Velde a racing and Van der Velde here well he had the tricky situation with Nambrini he's finally found his way through and you can see already he's put two and a half seconds between himself and Nambrini the driver who has yet to pit and I think Van der Velde we are hearing there from Tristan Stork in the YouTube chat saying can confirm Tinko is very frustrated for being held up well I can only imagine what is going through his mind right now as he's now got to try and close up to Zabolov who is seven and a half seconds up the road is it too late well they've still got a pit stop to make and they've still got 30 minutes anything can happen until that checkered flag remember it's not as though the race is over yet anything can happen we've seen that in motorsport whether it be recently in Formula One or alternatively in other series over the years even in the GT World Challenge and anything can happen here today in the next gen racing Intercontinental Challenge Championship for 2021 as all our drivers continue to make their way around you can see Krivich once again here in P16 but you can see the pace he's going for the move here to get that position to unlap himself and I think Van der Velde at this point will now be seeing a little bit more red here and it's not just because Krivich's car is painted red or the fact that Van der Velde's car is painted red although that is an irony in itself but I think it's one of those situations where Krivich right now really he does feel so he's got the pace to go up the field very rapidly and the Dragons eSport driver here just frustrated he is lapping in the very low 23s if not targeting the 22s meanwhile the drivers around him are on similar pace but Chris just simply not wanting to play the waiting game anymore as he makes his way up towards turn number six once again here but meanwhile we look from him to a little bit further up the road from him and that is Luca Felipe coming through turn number 10 right now and the German driver here who's yet to take his second stop he's tucked in behind Vesfield and trying to close up at this point but do remember that Felipe has to take that second stop which will put him down the order right now and I suspect will put him somewhere around P21, P22 when all is said and done but we'll wait and find out when he takes that all important second pit stop but ready for Felipe right now, the Weller Racing driver just keeping it together, driving it smart here and not doing anything too adventurous as he makes his way on a round. But speaking of drivers who are having a bit of an adventure, I can tell you that it is the case that Dylan Tan continues to chase after Marcus Fox here all over the back of the Porsche driver, but just not able to find a way to get the job done. Now in terms of lap times, I can tell you that Tan has been lapping in the high 22s, Marcus Fox has won the high 22s, so it's not as though the two drivers are not equal in terms of lap times, although Fox is starting to fall back 
tractors as we got a car off there and that is one of the Armentel Red that's the Armentel Red Ferrari and we will try and take a look at who that was very shortly but they've got it very wrong coming out to turn at number 10 and into the wall which is unfortunate for them I dare say but it is the case that right now Tan trying to find his way past Fox and I think now it is the case on that lap Fox a 23.4 the tyres on Fox's car I think are now starting to hit their point where he needs that pit stop and Tan will now need to get that move on as we ride on board here with the Ferrari driver as he comes through turn number four and heads up towards five now where can he do it well I think he needs to identify where Fox is losing that time and I think it's in the final couple of corners where Fox is really suffering as they make the way up towards turn number five here so it's not going to be an opportunity at this point in the lap it'll be towards the end of lap where he can target it and you can see in that dirt here just see how Tan struggling to get the car to point through turn number five just losing a little bit of that front end down force it's costing him the rotation with that extra understeer effectively and as they make the way up towards what is turn number seven right now they head up towards eight and as they come into that braking zone for corkscrew it is the case that Tan you can see the lines he's taking right now not as tight into the apex initially he wants to get the launch out of the corkscrew in order to have that speed coming down through nine and up towards ten and eleven as they come down towards 10 11 he's nowhere near close enough this time i think it might be the case that tan has just not had the lap that he wants as he makes his way up towards turn 11 once again here and instead continues to observe the rear end of the portion in front of him as driven by marcus fox as they make their way on through we can see that one of the nrt machines moving out of the way due to blue flags i believe that, that may have been emil blaine unless i'm much mistaken in fact that was andreas Sorensen. my apologies and as our drivers now make their way around once again it is the case that tan having to manage this because only three and a half seconds back and closing very rapidly right now is Dow King. Dow King on that last lap of 22.5 to Tan's 23.4. King is stripping 8 to 9 tenths of a second out of 10 a lap right now and is telling because you can see the Jota McLaren is now on a charge and further back, much further back, the best part of what is approximately 23 seconds back is Harry Phillips here in P11. I think he's still got some places to gain when the pit stops will occur. And speaking of pit stops occurring, there's Rain F and Shape making his way out of the pits right now. A lap down on Harry Phillips, but he comes out in P11. 19 here and he's got a nice gap to Benjamin Asseli in P20 as Efren State continues around the circuit here and makes his way through turn number four well, turn number three I should say up towards number four he goes now but we look from these guys to further up the road and we can see that meanwhile it's Whitehead versus Boothby still as they make the way up towards what is the braking zone for the corkscrew chicane once again and Whitehead holding on for now but here is the charge from Boothby we expect it was going to come back as we ride on board here with our leader looking back from the PPR Esports Porsche of Luke Whitehead now the Yass Heat Porsche of George Boothby behind right now these two teams going toe to toe of course pole position racing versus Yass Heat and as they make the way up towards the braking zone for turn number 11. Boothby now starting to build up once again here. I think he's given himself time and this could be an indicator that perhaps Boothby is considering coming into the pit zone. Alternatively trying to make Whitehead trigger a pit stop early. Perhaps he's trying to intimidate Whitehead and trying to make him yield to the pressure and take that pit stop so that way he just naturally gives George Booby, the clear here, he needs to put in the laps to jump Whitehead by going a bit longer. That's all part of the mind games here as well. Remember, both drivers will have a strategy in mind, but which one of them falls off that strategy could make a difference. Alternatively, who adapts the strategy could make a difference. It's all to play for here. And these two have been inseparable over the course of the 65 minutes of racing so far. As we move into the 66th minute and almost complete it, it has been non-stop. And I can only imagine that even one of these drivers who takes the win today would well deserve it. of course it's George Booby who wants to become our first repeat winner in this series having won at Suzuka meanwhile Whitehead wants to become our fourth winner in four races where well, he won't if he makes mistakes like that and they're exploiters Booby they're backed off but Whitehead made a mistake and ran a little bit wide out of turn at number six as they come down for the corkscrew here both of them are right on the limit and you can imagine if it's not going to be this close to the end it's going to be a mistake that puts the distance between the two of them because they are both pushing it to their utmost as we look to the exterior cameras once again here no change this time but you do have to wonder where George Booby may go for an undercut here if he can't gain the ground as Cherry Pennings into the pits once again from what was at the time P7 he's now in and that is going to see our championship leader drop back down the order but how far down the order he's currently in the pits where is Harry Phillips in all this well Harry Phillips is making his way right now up into what is turn at number 11 here so I think Phillips is going to gain that position or is he is but Sheriff Pinning is now making his way down towards the pit exit and the pit limiter line is there for when he can go racing again Phillips is going to take the position by the looks of things here so Phillips will gain another place but will Sheriff Pinning then close up to the back of the Bentley driver for World Things 
race and the S&P race in eSport driver will know that every place he now gains is critical for his championship hopes as he makes his way out of the hairpin and now goes hunting down the places up the road but how far can he go that is the question as we look further at the moment we see Dow King here in P9 closing up to Marcus Fox with Fox having been passed in the end by a tan we didn't quite see it on camera but Fox has been passed and it's the case that King now trying to put that pressure on as they make their way through turn 9 and up towards 10 the number 38 driver here will want Fox out of his way as soon as possible so he can hunt down tan as they make the way on through. But meanwhile, with the Christian Lembrini fan club in the chat there, which is great to see it, Giuseppe Mazze and also Gio Marchio Ianelli, we can see it. they're all cheering on, and also Enrica Maria Marinelli, I believe we saw in there earlier. They're all cheering on the Cortec racing driver here, who has yet to pit once again. He's in P5 right now, and whilst he will not be finishing P5, most likely, unless we have some rather freak circumstances, not meaning to torpedo his hopes, this is an absolutely brilliant drive from Lembrini to keep the car in this condition and his lap times to be fair tell the story he has not seen a single lap drift into the high 24s when he's not had a back marker to deal with I a car that he needs to lap to deal with it is the case that Embrini has been incredibly consistent and I can only imagine that right now with this sort of strategy in play if he's going this long he will gain a number of places just by simply have outlasted the rest of the field whether this is going to be for a top 10 I don't think so but it's going to put him well inside the top 20 when all is said and done based on our mathematical predictions probably somewhere around p14 p15 around zoiga pushgrev we reckon and speaking of zoiga pushgrev well zoiga has made his two stops pushgrev has yet to make his second stop and as a result nembrini will find his way right into the mix and we wait to see how it goes for christian as he continues around the circuit as he comes charging across that timeline once again but meanwhile we look from him to dow king who is now inch never closer to the back of marcus fox and we ride on board here with our driver in p9 it's the McLaren 720 driver here. Of course, our winner at Bathurst last time with only 20 minutes to go by the time he exits the Austin hairpin. It'll be one of those situations where Dow King now will see Tan just up the road from him. He'll know that Tan is only 1.1 seconds away. It's an opportunity to claim P7, if not even a higher, with Andres Mesa, Nembrini, Tinky van der Velde, and also Zabolov all needing to pit and all within arm's reach. Will it be the case that Dow King ends up towards the podium or at least into the top five? That will be the guess that we have to play the guessing game for as they make their way around the circuit here and it's the case that Dow King coming on through on the right hand here for the time being and as they make their way on through it's the case that we can see Fox just ahead here I think Fox getting closer and closer to King as they make their way through and Fox really now starting to hit that cliff on that second stint and I think Dow King at this point just needs to put a tiny bit more pressure on and he will have the job done as he comes with left hander of six can he look for into the chicane here are you the corkscrew no he can't as that track temperature does come down by another degree centigrade to 21 degrees it is the case of the track getting a little bit cooler and as they make the way on through no move this time but i'm sorry to cut away from this ladies and gentlemen as whitehead and also booby are coming towards one another once again here booby is going on another charge as they make the way through turn number nine and booby continuing now to mount that pressure as he did earlier now will this be a sign of a potential pit stop to come will we see either of them coming to the pits no they stay as they were as they make the way through turn number 11 and as they do they do not get close enough together for a potential move into turn one but we look back to Dow King who is close enough and these guys are just up the road from our leaders and you see Dow King looking for the move and he goes around the inside here late on the brakes and I think Fox in the end realizing that the story was up and it was the case that Dow King was going to come on through as meanwhile behind them where well, you can see the leaders now coming up to the back of this pack and this is how far ahead they are albeit they've yet to pit for their second stop but this is the pace they have been displaying throughout the race and I can tell you ladies and gentlemen in the last six laps neither Whitehead nor Booby have come out of the 21s they have been lapping non-stop in the high 21s and well the fastest lap of this race is still owned by Whitehead a 21.385 but that last lap a 21.9 for Whitehead a 21.7 for Booby and Booby really now mounting that pressure as they come through turn number six now of course at this point what Booby will want to do he'll want to be so close as to become inseparable from the back of Whitehead's car when they start to make their way past the cars they need to lap you can see the blue flags already out here as we've got one of the Cosmos Racing eSport team drivers also having to move out the way this only complicates matters 
because it means now we'll have multiple sets of blue flags waiting for different drivers here. Of course, they'll have it on their onboard dash when they need to move out the way as well. The blue flags on circuit. Is that Booby coming into the pits? However, Booby decides to call it early now. This is a critical pit stop for Booby because he needs to nail this pit stop and the outlap. Whitehead, meanwhile, has got traffic. Now, to be fair, the traffic has moved out the way initially in the form of the KRT machine. That's out the way. What about Fox, King and Tan? Will they be close enough for Whitehead to be impeded? We'll have to wait and see. Of course, as he makes his way through the Austin hairpin right now, it's a case that George Bivy, having made that pit stop, he's already cleared it and he's made his way off the jacks. He's coming out the pits. This is critical. This will determine who is going to be the leader going into the final. Will be approximately 16 minutes of this race as we've got a stop and go penalty for George Bivy. It's a stop and go penalty for speeding in the pit lane. My goodness. And with that, unless Whitehead makes a mistake of all proportions that is going to be Whitehead now on the course for the win oh goodness me and we've seen a number of drivers fall victims of a stop and go today those speed limits in the pits and Booby has been hit by it as well and this completely turns what was looking to be an opportunity for a major undercut on the race leader into a dead cert if Whitehead does not pull a foul line Whitehead will be on his way to win this but we're not going to count it over yet we've still got plenty of the race to go anything can happen here but my goodness, Boothby with a well that stop and go, and that is a shock to the system. As right now, well, the driver who's going to gain from it most will be Oleg Zabolov, who right now 17 and a half seconds down, but he's yet to make his second pit stop. So whether he will gain that much is a question in of itself. I think Boothby will still be potential. Well, no, stop and go for a second penalty. That's going to put him all the way down the order, even with Zabolov's pit stop here, and that is going to open up the rest of the podium massively. As our drivers make their way on around, as we can see Zavolov in P3 and then Tinko van der Velde in P4 as he makes his way up through the left-hander at turn number six. My goodness, ladies and gentlemen, you could not predict this. And meanwhile, if you wanted an update on whether Christian Nambrini has decided to pit, I can tell you he has not decided to pit as yet. He is carrying on. As we've got a car going wide there, we couldn't quite see what it was, but it was a car going wide out of turn number six. But meanwhile, Dylan Tan has now got Dow King all over the back of him here as they make the way through turn six and up towards seven and you can see King then Fox and then Harry Phillips and well Harry Phillips here well he has got George Boothby behind him right now and Boothby will want him to move out of the way as soon as possible of course I think Phillips will be much wiser to that and be very aware that what he needs to do as Sheriff Penny is only 4.2 seconds back behind Phillips right now and our championship leader will see an opportunity here to gain he will need a top 10 finish as a minimum because right now if things were to finish as they are I can tell you that while Sheriff Penny I believe would still be our championship leader going into the finale his advantage to the likes of Tinker van der Velde and also Whitehead would be compressed massively in fact I think Whitehead would become our championship leader by a small margin it would open things up for the season finale this is very hard to predict I can tell you right now as we see Dow King here getting very close to the back of Dylan Tan and Whitehead in the mix here and this is uncomfortable for Tan well sorry not for Tan for Whitehead this is very uncomfortable and for Tan it is as well and Dow King finds himself in the middle where he's got to yield to the lead car who's flashing his lights already but he won't want to lose the time to that opportunity to take on Tan. Now Whitehead here very close to the back of the Joe to McLaren and you see Whitehead making the move into turn number four. Dow King's going to lift off here. I think what he's going to do, he's going to tuck in as close as possible to Whitehead and what he will want is for Whitehead to pull him past Tan or get him so close as to be literally side by side with Tan when they make their way clear and as they come through turn number six you can see it's the case that King already trying to maintain that gap as they make their way up towards the court school but in return Tan having to navigate his way past Nesta Magia who moves nicely off the line there Nesta Magia all the way down in what is all the way down the order in P24 as it currently stands but right now the Laguna Seca circuit with 14 minutes of races still to go definitely offering a lot of drama at the last possible moment here and you can't make this up as right now Dow King looks to try and find a way to get into P7 and this is effectively we believe the battle for the final spot on the podium or it might even be the battle for P2, P3 depending on how Boothby's stop and go 30 second penalty drops in down the order right now but Tan and King literally nose to tail here I think both of them now know how high the stakes are as they make the way down towards turn at number two here on lap number what is lap number 50 uh, 55. Meanwhile, Whitehead on lap number 56 as George Booby into the pits of the stop and go penalty. So he has taken the penalty as George Booby. He is in. And as he makes his way in right now, well, that is not a good looking 
Porsche parking right now as I think they're going to have to move that car into position but it is the case that with Boothby there taking that stop and go penalty in the meantime Whitehead right now navigating his way past the traffic which is compliant in the end and well did Dow King gain from all of it he has got very close to the back of Dylan Tan we ride on board once again here with the McLaren drivers he makes his way through turn six if he wanted to be any closer this is the opportunity he needed as they make the way into the break he's over court screen you can see King trying to creep round the outside and look for the cutback there's a small bit of contact between the two drives and King has to back off completely as Tan just parks on the apex there as it only narrows into a one way road and as they make the way out to nine and up towards ten right now into the right hand they go there's going to be another opportunity because I think Tan's now going to have to navigate more traffic and King will come through behind as we're hearing that Nembrini's finally into the pits for his first pit stop so if anybody were an update how long Membrini went before pitting he went a grand total of 77 minutes on an opening stint which is very impressive indeed is the longest stint we have seen to date in this series but meanwhile focusing on the battle for P6 all stints aside these guys are on their final stint it's Dow King attacking Tan ahead of him and right now we can see that the Jota McLaren driver whilst he can get close has not got that advantage in terms of being able to find his way through as they make the way out of turn number three up towards four once again here into the right hand they come and I think what King's got to do he really needs to find a way to gain through that sweeper of four here because you can see running that dirty air off the back of Tan's car it's just costing him the ability to stay as close as he would like as he goes through these corners right now going a bit deeper in and it's costing him the time as every time he goes a little bit deep beyond apex that's half attempt to attempt he loses in this pursuit as he now falls back to approximately four attempts of a second in the run up the hill towards the corkscrew once again but no change between these two at this point in time as they make their way through the court screw once again and come down the hill and it's the case they were as they were when you caught up to them earlier on but as they make their way down through the court you can see Marcus Fox there I think I'm enjoying the situation whereby he has got another pit stop to go to be fair but he's staying with the drivers who've made their pit stops he does have the Armentor Red of Ferrari there on his way and I believe that may be a push crev unless I'm very much mistaken holding that position and well as they make their way through the corners right now I think it's the case that Fox just enjoying this opportunity to have a nice, clean, consistent race as they make their way around. But meanwhile, looking from these guys to a little bit further up the road, one driver who we haven't really talked about very recently, Andres Mesa, the Spaniard here in P4. Well, he's chasing after Tinker van der Velde. The gap between the two of them right now, 12 seconds almost, as Tinker van der Velde quite a way up the road. And Andres Mesa at this point targeting a potential opportunity here of a top 10. As you can see, George Booby, well, this is where that stop and go 30 second penalty has led the Yas Heat driver to come out. As we can see there, we've got one of the KRT machines moving out the way for George Booby. He'll be trying to come through the field like a missile now, and he will literally you do everything he can in order to be able to undercut and in fact he has not come out behind Tan or King so right now Tan and King are effectively battling we believe for the final step of the podium or are they as Zabolov is into the pits Oleg Zabolov comes in the Russian for S&P racing eSport from P2 now where will this bring him out will it bring him out ahead of Ubi behind him behind Tan behind King let's wait and find out as he's made his pit stop already and Tinker Vandervel coming out of the final corner here he's yet to pit as the Team Tonky driver and we know he's been very hard he's been very hard hit by catching drivers at the wrong point in the race and particularly Nembrini who crossed him a lot of time but to be fair Nembrini allowed to because it was track position but Zabolov already out of the pit lane he's now charging down towards turn at number two down towards the Austin hairpin here where's George Booby and all this well George is making his way down into the braking zone right now and as they make their way into left hand it is the case that I think Zabolov's going to have the advantage it's not going to be much but it's going to be enough here to mean that now Zabolov is on course to a potential P2 if Booby cannot find his way on through here so this is the battle for the final podium as they make their way on through Whitehead has yet to pitch we point out with nine minutes to go our race leader has yet to make his second stop but it's the case I think Whitehead is clear enough here with Tinker van der Velde a long way back that he doesn't have to worry about it as we see Booby they're going a little bit wide on the exit of four uh, sorry the exit of five I should say and as a result being absorbed by the curve there as he makes his way up through six and as they come charging up the hill now down towards the uh, chicane they come down towards the court screw chicane Booby will have his tyres up to temperature early on meanwhile Zabolov will not and he's got Krivich ahead of him who is a lap down but we know Christian Krivich very very fast around here but just not happy to settle in behind drives necessarily he feels that he's got a lot of pace oh goodness me and Booby gets it wrong there coming out to nine just pushing a little bit too hard and I think that may be a bit of frustration really kicking in for the Porsche driver knowing just how wrong this race has gone when it was all looking as though he was on course to take that win through strategy or have that great opportunity at the win he's now 
dropped further back behind us. Zavolov now 1.3 seconds back and continuing to push. He is going to look for every which way to close up. As meanwhile, talking about closing up, Dow King still closed up behind Dylan Tan as they go on to another lap here. Eight minutes to go. The Jota McLaren still cannot find its way past the Legions of Racers Ferrari as they make their way through the Austin Hairpin here through turn number two. But you can see Dow King now very, very close. They're almost tapping the back of the Ferrari as they make their way through two and up into three. Now, as they come on through in the meantime here, making their way through the corners, I can tell you that Harry Phillips, when all is said and done, he has got Marcus Fox ahead of him. Marcus Fox has made his second stop. Well, Phillips has literally come out behind, and you see Fox there doing a little weave to the right on the straight here to break the toe. Wary that Harry Phillips will be looking for the move, and as they come down to the braking zone here for turn number two, Phillips not close enough to go for it this time, but definitely the Wild Things racing driver looking and really putting that pressure on as they make their way around. Seven and a half minutes to go. And right now, really, I think Phillips and Fox will be battling for P8 when Nimbrini takes that second pit stop. And Nimbrini, of course, only eight and a half seconds up the road. So it will be the case that Fox and Phillips will be promoted when that's all said and done. And these two will need to be wary because they've got Daniela Sherapin in here, who's in P11. He will be promoted to P10, although he runs wide there. Coming out to turn number four, he's going to have to be careful of that. But right now, our championship leader is trying to do damage limitation. And it's looking as though the best he could achieve here is a P8 if he's able to close up to the back of Phillips and Fox. But not long to go in this race as Mio Tenko van der Velde has taken his second stop. Now, where does this release him? Well, Dylan Tan and also Dow King are making their way across the timeline already. So, Tinka van der Velde is going to come out behind these guys. What about Andres Mace? Well, Mace is making his way out of turn 10 right now. So, Tinka van der Velde will come out the pits in P6. Meanwhile, Christian Nembrini there making his way around in P8 is yet to take his second stop one of only two drivers to do so here and I get the feeling at this point then Brini just trying to make the second stint go as long as possible in order to be able to try and just hold on to that track position at the very end of this race but we will wait and see how Nembrini plays out this final portion of his strategy his very long and sustained strategy as we look from him back to Dow King here and Dow King once again all over the back of Tan as they make the way up towards turn number six now he's been this close before but he's not been able to capitalise on it but this time can he find a way on through as they make the way out of KRT car they're going wide but you can see King all over the back we tried this previously as we see the Armatel Red Ferrari they're coming in very heavy on the race we've got cars going wide that's one of the ITR machines I think that's Kevin Gellin who's had something go very wrong if I'm not mistaken and as they make their way down through the left hand of right now you can see King all over the back of town but he just cannot find a way to go through but you can see the impatience now as he's so close he's going to reach out and grab that rear wing and as they make the way through he's going to go around the outside Side. He's not quite able to do it though with the fact that Tan stays there and King instead now has to tuck back in as you can see the Armentero Red Ferrari that's a lap down doesn't want to get in on this. He just wants to try and gain as much time as possible as they make the way down towards turn number two and King I can imagine right now in that cockpit getting frustrated probably saying what do I have to do to find a way past the Legions of Racers Ferrari. Well it's a case that you can get your nose ahead King but you've got to try and find a way now to keep it there as they make the way through turn number three but you can see King building up to something as they make the way through the right hand and meanwhile just up the road I can tell you that Oleg Zabolov has got the pressure of George Booby breathing down his neck right now as they make the way through turn number six and the S&P racing eSport driver here will know that Booby will want to come through for that P2 but is he going to give it up? No he will not not having come this far and got into P2 on merit and as they make the way down through the corkscrew here you can see Booby trying to find every which way he goes round the outside here and Zabolov blocks that off before it becomes too much of a move into turn nine but as they come down through the left hander nine and into ten booby all over the back of Zavolov as we ride on board here with the Porsche driver as he looks her way on through there's only three laps remaining in this race as we're waiting for our race leader to make his second stop we're waiting for Nembrini to make his second stop they're the last two have yet to make their second stops but right now the competition is fierce and it's George Booby trying to regain second place in the end after the frustration of a stop and go penalty they make the way into the breaking zone here for the Austin hairpin he's not able to find it time but he's trying to go for a cutback here on the second apex and as they make the way on through the corner it's the case you can see just how much he's closed up he looks the inside there into three he's not able to find it and Zabolov not fainting to the inside instead they make the way now out three up towards four Zabolov holds firm on the racing line here but Booby trying to get that momentum through four and you can see he almost gets it but fighting the steering wheel there that's how hard he's having to push in that Porsche the ass heat drivers they make the way into the braking zone for turn number five no change at this time but still very close as he constantly fights the steering wheel there in that Porsche 911 RSR and as they make the way up into the left hander at turn number six no way for it at the moment you can imagine a booby right on the limit of what is possible 
as they make the way all the way up towards turn at number 8 here into that heavy braking zone they go and well, is he going to try it again is he going to try to look all the way around the outside I think it was brave the first time do it twice however and that is going to be even braver and as they make the way through no attempt this time he's all over the back as they come down through turn at number 10 and you can see now Zavolov really having to pull out the stops here to curb the momentum of the Porsche behind him as they make the way into the braking zone he tries to go around the outside Zavolov tries to squeeze as wide as possible there's contact there but I think it will be the case that Zavolov trying to give Booby as little room as possible Booby still tucked in behind and that's only going to intensify things as they go on to another lap here for them we believe it is the penultimate lap as they come charging down towards turn at number two and Booby all over the back meanwhile we look from then briefly to Dow King who's looking for the move on Tan here as they have got the arm and tail red Ferrari ahead of them they make the way in towards the braking zone here and the Joe to McLaren is going to try and go around the outside he can't quite do it and with the back marker in the way I think he's just been held back just too much there and Dow King my goodness what has he got to do to find a way on for it it just doesn't seem to work as then Brini's into the pits and surely that must mean Whitehead is coming in at the end of this lap because if he's not he will be subject to a disqualification for not obeying the pit rules as meanwhile it is the case we look from this to the battle between P3 and P2 and as they make the way around through turn number six you can see Booby has dropped back by about three tenths of a second but he is closing up once again now, meanwhile, where is Whitehead and all this? Well, Luke Whitehead is behind him. Now, this, well, goodness me, ladies and gentlemen, Whitehead not making his second pit stop. It means he now gets the popcorn view of the, the spectator seat, if you will, of the battle for P2. He's not going to see it for long because he will have to peel into the pits at the end of this lap. But he must be smiling right now as he makes his way into the pits and doesn't need to do anything silly. But meanwhile, this battle for P2 and sees the ball up there defending Booby, looking for the cutback. And there's contact between the two of them. And Booby puts the brakes on immediately out of respect there. As you can see, he tried to go for the cutback, but Zabola parked it on the apex and gradually built up the throttle to hold the position. All the gloves are off right now between these. So it's brilliant racing action. The respect is being shown as much as it possibly can. But right now, Booby just trying to find a way past Zabola to bring home that P2, which he will feel he deserves when all is said and done. Meanwhile, Whitehead made his pit stop. He's coming off the jacks and just gradually, gingerly, as I look out my commentary box window, very gingerly. I think he's going lower than the limiter right now. He does not want to stop and go 30 second penalty as he goes on to the final lap for the 65th lap of Laguna Sega and Whitehead has made it out of the pits he's not getting a stop and go penalty he just needs to bring the car home right now but whilst he's bringing the car home Zabolov and Booby are on their penultimate lap right now and as they come charging on through the corners who is going to be on that second step of the podium that is the question as we're hearing that Dow King is still behind Tan in meanwhile in the battle for P4 we can't look at it right now as they're making their way through it's the case we're focusing on this battle for P2 but you can imagine Imagine for Zabolov, he is literally having to pull out every single stop in order to hold on to this position. You can see Booby all over the back of him once again as they make the way around. No way this time, but they're coming up to turn 11. Booby getting a very strong exit of 10. Zabolov's going to squeeze him to the outside here. It is as it was in the last lap, but Booby will be aware now that Zabolov will park it on Apex. And instead, they both come out of their nose to tail as they go on to their final lap. But as they come on through right now and make their way down towards what is turn at number two. And I don't think Booby's going to find the play here as he tries to go all the way around the outside oh goodness me and he's into the into into the air there we look back to our leader who as he makes his way through the right hander of turn number 10 he's led this one from start to finish in the end it is the case that he had to battle with George Booby and a stop and go 30 second penalty took the pressure off at the very end but it's going to be Luke Whitehead who takes the win and makes it four winners in four races in the Intercontinental Championship in what has been a a flawless drive from the Briton here finishing in the end almost half a lap clear with that over half a lap clear from Zabolov and I think George Booby having a disconnect from the race right at the end he has completely disappeared off our screens there but Whitehead in the end winning this race by almost a lap over the field approximately a minute between himself and Zabolov as Zabolov makes his way right now through the court screen. I do wonder what's happened to Booby's car because we just saw it go up into the sky but it is the case that Zabolov will now make his way through the final few corners here. The number 56 driver who has driven this one so well from start to finish. He has defended well to hold on to P2 and as he makes his way through the final corner he will be on the second step of our podium and I'm sure exhausted but pleased with this final result as he comes to the finish line and then it will be in P3 when all is said and done. He has held off the pressure of Dow King. It will be the lead Legion of Racers driver in the number 144 car from Singapore, Dylan Tan, who comes home 
third and on the third step of the podium ahead of Dow King and it will be Tinko van der Velde who comes home P5 if, as we can see him crossing the line here and I think the two McLaren drivers very frustrated with how their race went in the end as we are Andres Mesa will come home in P6 the last driver to finish on the lead lap 65 laps completed my goodness what a race in the end i think george booby and then being classified as p7 with a disconnect right at the end of the race well don't go anywhere ladies and gentlemen we'll be back very shortly for our post-race interviews you will not want to miss them from our podium finishers i'm sure luke whitehead in particular will be absolutely delighted with today's result don't go anywhere we'll be back in three to four minutes
Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we get ready for our post-race podium interviews now, and we will be kicking off with our race winner, the number 21 car of Luke Whitehead, very shortly. But before we do, we've had some confirmation from the YouTube chat, and we really do appreciate it from you guys and girls in the YouTube chat, hearing from Raymond Mooney there, uh, seeing Booby flying, and then So What saying that it was a case that Booby's game crashed right at the end, so he had that disconnect on the final lap due to a game client crash, which is very unfortunate indeed, and as a result, really took away what was a very close battle for P2 at the finish line. But still, these things happen. It would be the equivalent to, say, Booby's engine breaking right at the end, but he did finish P7 classified because he made it onto that final lap. So whilst he did lose a number of places, he did not lose out against the whole field. And we also say hello there to what is Sweet Lurb in the Twitch chat, tuning in late, but still very grateful to have you here, and also RS there, tuning in the YouTube chat. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we now bring in Luke Whitehead, our race winner. Let's hear from him and what he's got to say. Hello Luke, can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear Paul, how are you doing? Oh fantastic Luke, but enough about me. How about yourself? You've just made yourself our fourth winner in four different races in these series. How do you feel about taking the win at Laguna Seca? Relieved, <laughs> relieved and really happy to be honest. Um, you know, first off, condolences to George. Um, you know, gutted for him. I think he had a stop go after he made the second pit stop, and then obviously his game died going on to the final lap. So gutted for him because I think he could have got second. But up until then, wow, what, what, what a battle! You know, I, um, I messed up the defence on the first attempt, and then obviously jumped George into the pits, and then, wow, I, I'm still, I'm still trying to, you know, get my breath back and recover from it because I was streaming that race as well, and it was. Just constant concentration and just non-stop action. So it was um, crazy, crazy. But I'm very, very happy with the outcome for sure. Oh, that's brilliant to hear. We'll dissect it a bit and giving you the opportunity to just bring your breath down a little bit. Starting with qualifying, <laughs> you look to be an unstoppable force in qualifying. We saw you and George trade in lap times in the practice session, separated, I think, by something like five thousandths of a second. But in the qualifying session itself, you seemed you had an advantage and it was a two and a half tenth advantage. Just take us through what's going through your mind in qualifying. Well, stress and disappointment uh, because midway through the uh, midway through the quali, um, I lagged out of the server, um, so I was really panicking. My stream died at the same time, so I don't know whether my Wi-Fi had a temporary drop or something. But I was panicking to try and get that fixed. I got it fixed within a couple of minutes and lost, I think, two three minutes of qualifying. And then at the end, I was on for a, what would have been my quickest time of the day, which was like a mid 120, so it really like a 120.5, which was about five tenths quicker than what I did in the end. Um, but unfortunately, a back marker got in the way uh, through the final sector, and I lost, I think, all of the time that I had in the pocket. So the time was way slower than what I really could have had. And I think George had the same issue. I don't know whether he got impeded by back markers or whether he just couldn't get that together. You know, Laguna is such a hard track. Um, to even just get a safe lap, let alone a quick lap. So, yeah, definitely so narrow, so intense. But yeah, the quality was was ideal. Um, you know, the result itself was ideal. Um, so yeah, I was pretty relieved, and then I knew just in the race would be a little bit easier because of that. But it was very, very tough. Very, very tough. And then coming on to the race itself, we saw how important the start was. You held on to the lead going through the first couple of corners, but it seemed as though George kept mounting a bit of pressure, then taking it away, then coming back at you and taking it away. Just what was going through your mind, particularly on that opening stint, but also on the second stint, where you constantly had this sort of on-off. It was almost as if George was playing with an on-off light switch to determine when you'd need to defend and when you wouldn't need to defend. Yeah, it was uh, it was really tough because obviously I know how strong George is and I... I, you know, I back myself quite highly uh, in the Porsche at the moment. I know that I'm strong, um, and I so I knew that holding George behind would be difficult. And obviously, I don't know if it it showed the lap times for you uh, for the coverage, but me and George were pretty much matching laps every single lap. You know, he'd be a tenth quicker than I'd be a tenth quicker, then he'd be two tenths quicker than I'd be two tenths quicker. You know, we were basically just trading punches, uh, lap after lap after lap. And we were both ultra consistent. We were both within you know a, a few tenths across the entire stint so we were both very similar and both very consistent so i always knew that any one mistake would would you know would, would lose me the position obviously it did in the end but it was the same for george you know i think george overshot the box and that cost him the position so it was it was that close that it was only going to be a mistake you know neither of us were quick enough compared to one another that we'd be able to make an assault and make a genuine overtake on track it would have to be 
a mistake or a blunder from the other driver that would give us the win. So it was it was that close, and that's why it was so so intense because he was obviously pushing me really hard, and I was obviously just trying to rebound any pressure that I got um, constantly, um, and it was intense pressure constantly. So yeah, definitely a really exciting one, and definitely one that I learned a lot from as well. Oh, indeed. And I can tell you, with regards to those lap times, uh, the pair of you practically for the entirety of the race were the only drivers lapping in the 121s, or at least for the majority of it. And yes, that back and forth lap time exchange, we did have the opportunity to see. It was fantastic. But I do have to ask, with regards to the, the pit stops, um, when you came out ahead of George Booby after the first round of pit stops, was that what you expected to happen? Because he had a little bit of contact with another driver in the pits coming into pits. No, I didn't expect it. I mean, I was obviously about, I think, 1.5 seconds behind him when he came into the pits. So I knew that if I just kept it safe, I'd close the gap a little bit. But I, you know, on normal scenario, because obviously cold tyres is worth a lot. But I got held up by two drivers who hadn't made a stop yet or were a lap down. So that cost me about six-ish tenths. So I knew that I wouldn't catch as much on George as what I would have originally. And then I came out about six seven tenths ahead and i was really really confused and yeah it, i knew that the job would be easier but i still knew it would be very very tough to hold him behind especially because i was obviously on cold tires and his were up to temperature so yeah very relieved but very surprised as well well indeed and i, I do have to ask i hate to ask this but at the same time i'd love to hear your thoughts when you saw that he'd been given the stop and go 30 second penalty for speeding in the pit lane by the looks of things I do have to wonder, what went through your mind at that point? Was it a, um, an outright reaction of celebration, or was it sort of, okay, just don't do the same mistake, gingerly bring it into the pits. You know, go even slower than the pit limit, so don't go anywhere near that speed limit. Yeah, it, it, was a, it was a mix of both. You know, when it originally happened, I saw the message 75 stop go, and I was like, is that for speeding in the pits? And then I looked on the race director, because you can, I've got a button map to look at the race director, and I saw that he had got a stop go, so I was like, that's good. <laughs> you know, I was, I was, I won't lie, I was very, very happy with it, but I was also a little bit disappointed, you know, because I knew that it was going to be a very, very close battle, and I always relish those battles. You know, you, you never like to have it particularly easy. You, it's always better to win when you've had to really fight for it. And of course, I have, but it would have been better to have a fight to the death, um, so to speak. But yeah, I can't really complain. It gave me a win that was very, very easy in the end. So. You know, I can't, I can't, I can't be too disappointed for sure. Understandably so. And now with that result, that puts you, if not ahead of Daniel Sherapin, I haven't quite done the maths yet, but I believe it puts you right alongside, if not a tiny bit ahead, and effectively makes you our championship leader going into the final round at Spa in a week's time. What can we expect from yourself in the Super Endurance race, the two-hour endurance at Spa? I honestly don't know. I mean, obviously, I knew coming into Laguna that the Porsche was extremely strong, and I think me and George showed that very in you know in a lot of clarity. But Spa is an unknown. It's a track that I've not done a lot round in general, um, and I've done zero laps in the Porsche, so I have no clue. I know the McLaren is extremely strong, if not the strongest um, round there. Although I, I don't know because I haven't tested. But this can be very tough. Uh, it's not the strongest track for me. I'm just going to have to try and do the best I can with what I have and just hope that something happens to Danila but yeah <laughs> I'm very excited very nervous but you know it's going to be a good challenge and it's always nice to have that so better tune in guys because it's going to be a good one for sure <laughs> Indeed, were well, brilliant drive from yourself. We look forward to seeing you take to the Belgian circuit in a week's time. But until then, congratulations on the win at Laguna Seca. A brilliant drive, Mr. Whitehead. Thank you very much, Paul. Take care of yourself. All the best to you too. So hearing that there from Luke Whitehead, very pleased with the result in the end. Very, well, you could hear the happiness in his voice. I think it's still sinking in the reality. And right now, I think he's going to just need a few moments to bring himself down to earth and just realise how big a win that was in terms of the championship. But meanwhile, whilst he's now walking away and I think celebrating, and it's going to be a good night in the team office for the PPR team, we now move over to our second place man of Oleg Zabolov. Now, I must be honest with you, I'm won't be able to bring you Oleg Zvolov in the interview room. Unfortunately, he's not available for interview, but I have had some words come from the S&P team and indeed from him to read out. And his short message is as follows. 
Big thanks to George Booby for the battle on the last few laps. It was a great race. I had strong pace and I think I made all what I could of the race. And indeed we saw Zabolov there putting in a very strong performance having started P4 and finishing in second. And we look forward to seeing what Zabolov can achieve come the season finale at Spa in a week's time. But with that we now move on to Dylan Tan and let's hear from the Singaporean driver. Hello Dylan, can you hear me? Hello Dylan, you're a little bit faint, but I can just about hear your microphone. Is this better? Yep, that's better, that's brilliant. So Dylan, thank you for joining us in the interview room. Congratulations on the third place today. How's it feel to be on the podium at Laguna Seca? Uh, it feels good, but uh, I think I just got lucky to be on the podium. Because George disconnected. Indeed, it's one of those things I think whereby luck can play its role, but still, it's no mean feat from yourself, and in qualifying, a good pace shown for yourself in the Ferrari to qualify on the second row. How did qualifying go for you from your perspective? Qualifying went well. Uh, I put in a good lap time and also did well in the race. Okay, and then translating that into the race, we saw you start off alongside Oleg Zabolov, and in the end, um, whilst it didn't quite work out at the start, you're still right in the hunt for the top five. What was your what was your strategy going into this race? Were you looking to try and hold positions, or were you okay with drivers who were slightly faster than you sort of coming up behind? What was your game plan? My game plan was definitely to get as many points as possible and maybe try to get as high as possible. I see, and then on the on the strategic front, with the, the way the pit stops played out, we saw at the end after your second pit stop, you had Dow King constantly putting pressure on you for the remainder of the race of the final 20 minutes. Just take us through what it was like battling with Dow King. Uh, it was intense, he had good pace and I had to defend him quite hard. Oh, that's brilliant to hear. And now, looking ahead to the finale in a week's time, we go to spa Francom Champs. How are you feeling for the Belgian circuit? I think the Belgium circuit will be a good circuit for overtaking and it will be a good race. All right, Dylan, well, it's been brilliant to hear from you and we look forward to seeing what you achieve at Spa in a week's time. But until then, congratulations on the third place once again. Brilliant drive from you. Thank you. Have a good night. The here and there from Dylan Tanner. I think a bit out of breath with regards to the racing and as he admitted straight away from the start feeling quite lucky with regards to finishing in third place with George Booby having the technical issues right at the end meaning you got promoted the spot but still that's sometimes the way the racing goes but still a great battle between Dylan and Dow, uh, Dow King going all the way down to the wire and in the end the Ferrari driver holding on to bring home that final step excuse me, of the podium. And indeed, it'll be interesting to see whether our three who are on the podium today make it onto the podium in the season finale. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, that brings to an end our show for today. Thank you very much for watching the full round of the Intercontinental Challenge Championship for 2021 as brought to you by Next Gen Racing. And if you do want to know more about our community and what we do, why not check us out our official racing website, that is nextgenracing.co.uk. Alternatively, our official Facebook group, that is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash next gen racing also a huge thank you to our partners about whom it would not be possible to bring you this series and that is the sim grid the simgrid.com and also coach dave academy that's coach dave academy.com and again thanks thank you to them it would not be possible to bring you this series and all the fantastic race in action but now we look ahead to a week's time to spa franklin shots december the 21st tuesday of next week save the date ladies and gentlemen it will be the two hour super endurance which will determine our final championship positions you will not want to miss it if Spark can guarantee anything, much like Dylan Tan said, it's a brilliant circuit for overtaking, plenty of racing action to come, and we look forward to bringing it to you. But until then, from all of us here at Next Gen Racing, it is goodbye from us all. I have been Paul TX141 Walsh, also known as Britain of Bit, and until next time, remember to stay safe, stay well, stay smiling, but most importantly, remember to stay on track. Good night.